So the, the reason why um, we can't, like, I do, I think, uh, I did think about this yesterday that I would like to sit down with you once we um, have your text messages and the phone calls and we can put them in a, uh, some type of easily looking, that we can sit down and look at them and compare them and we can kind of get the context of how everything was going that night. I would like to do that with you, unfortunately. So the download that we got yesterday is going to take uh, multiple days to be analyzed. I probably won't have it back till next week. And then because you guys did have so many um, text messages, uh, there is one of my analysts is working on getting those in order. So we can put something together where we can actually sit down and discuss it. But I do think that's something that we would, I want to do in the near future sometime, probably next week. I mean, I can do that. I don't mind giving you guys my time. I just need you guys to like help me with my employer and try to just help me brace for this media thing. I, I'm with you. We definitely need to accelerate the case because the more law, the more it takes, the less sure that they are of situation. He murdered her. She's out of the picture. You're never going to know if she was pregnant. If he can get away with murder. You're not going to, I got divorced from my wife. You Wait. say, do you understand what I'm saying here? If, if she's gone, but this don't lead hypothetically, please. Yeah. Don't hypothetically, lead if she, okay. you understand where I'm going. If right, you didn't you're, know, you're leading into right. questions that are but, nothing with your, if you didn't know though, Wait, Nick, that she was there. Did you hear what I said? I'm not, I'm following you. Stop asking about it. She didn't have anything to do with it. She wasn't there that morning. She voluntarily cooperated with law enforcement. She provided us all the information. I'm not going to tell you where she's at. Stop. Leave me alone. I'm aware of the bonds that were created today. When you told me that sure there's a way The water's so still And my pain has gone away The air is much cleaner after the rain Follow my love Except it's in spring air Follow the moment of the sun there's a call from the beginning too, but the sorrow of yesterday disappeared. There's nobody in you. I'm a wanderer of the soul before the end, I plan to behold. But I know I'll lose myself along the way. What's gone is gone. What's past is past. Let me leave what belongs in the past. Road ahead is quite unclear. Let me walk it despite fear. The road stretches over the hills. And I've got many debts to pay. Somewhere on the road. All right, so hey, let me bring myself into the stream here. So hi, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to Watsy Obsession. Friday night live stream. It's Watsy Obsession date night, and I'm so glad that you are here with us tonight. So tonight we are going to be talking about the Watts case and what we're going to be talking about. I got this idea to do this stream 
um, just earlier today because I'm working on, you know, recently I was searching for, like, I just wanted to find a really good, solid biography of Shanann Botts. And while you can find pieces of her life, her story told in little bits and pieces on YouTube or other social media platforms or, you know, other things, you know, there's like the Netflix, um, what is it special? It's just one, it's not a series. I couldn't find any really good cohesive biographies of Shanann Watts. So I'm working on that right now. And as I've been working on that, I've been going back through some of the videos that I've done focusing on the life of Shanann Watts. And I'm looking at the questions that you've been asking, because of course I want to give you the kind of content that you guys want to watch. And something that has been asked of me, and I'm sure other channels that cover this case quite a bit, is what was up with Shanann Watts when she was at Dirty South? Wasn't there, weren't there some charges against her? Wasn't there some kind of financial crime being committed? And I just want to clear um, the record as to what happened. There was actually a case. It was Key versus Dirty South, it was called. And we're going to go over that today. And I just want to clear up the record on what that was all about. Because as with a lot of things, as a story is told and, you know, the truth isn't really there to ground it, it can be made into a much more horrible and, and a bigger issue than it really is. And it's up to you to decide if you think it's a big issue or not. But I've got the scoop on that for you. We're also going to be looking into the past of Nicole Kessinger. It was just last week during this Friday night, Watch the Obsession date night live stream, right, Keith? <laughs> that right afterwards, well, it was right during this live stream, Plunder had posted a video about, and props to Plunder. Plunder is always one of the recommended channels for me on this channel. I think she's been, you know, she appears in the home page or whatever it's called here as one of my recommended true crime channels because I just think she's a bomb. She always does her work. She researches like crazy and she is always really accurate. So during last week's live stream, she uploaded a video about the arrest history of Nicole Kessinger. Now, this is a question that people ask about a lot, too. People have brought up this idea recently, or no, it's been going on for a while, that Nicole Kessinger stabbed somebody in the back. And I will always say to people, even in the live stream, and I'm sorry if I shut you down for bringing that up before, but, you know, we like to be fact-based here, and I didn't know anything about it. But Plunder is going to actually address that rumor. We still don't have any hard facts about it, but I'm going to let you know what we do know um, during the course of this live stream. So welcome to everybody who is here. I'm so happy you guys are here. Hey, Muck Boys. Hey, Utter. Molson Man. Oh, Molson Man. I haven't seen you all. So good to see you. Mr. What is it? Garlic Man. Oh, I love me some garlic. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Chris, like Chris. Thank you. I think I may have pronounced it incorrectly before. Thank you so much. Hi, Sabrosa friend. How are you? Nilda, wonderful to see you. Little Nancy, how are you doing? Ara, my girl, how's it going? Edward Schwank, thank you so much for being here. Moderators, subscribers, members, everybody, people that are just dropping in, people that are looming. We're glad you're here too. And Replay Crew, welcome. We are glad you're here too. Um, let's see, Aussie Jen, Jody is cool. Hey, my girl, how are you doing? Let's see, I'm just going to go up a little more. And if I missed you, I'm going to drop back down to current time, but say hello, and I will do my best to say hello back. If I missed you, I promise it was not intentional. Hey, Laura, how's it going, girl? Nice to see you. Always happy when you can make it to a live stream. Hey, my girl, Sherry Patila. Am I saying that correctly, Sherry? <laughs> Thank you for the email you sent me last night. That was insanity. One of our favorite Seeking the Not Truth channels <laughs> put up some not truth information on his channel and Sherry sent it to me. Oh my gosh, he's always at it. Clover, how's it going? Patty Romera, how's it going, my friend? Let's see, Winsong, what a beautiful name. Donna English, welcome, how are you doing? And David, BMX, how are you doing, David? Great to see you. Hey, Karen, how's it going? And all right, I'm going to start to drop back down to current times. Serena Williams, always so happy you're here. Love reading your comments. Serena is a very logically minded, rational, good thinker. I like hearing what she has to say for sure. So, and oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I got to thank you so much to 411 now for the $20 super chat. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you for supporting me and for supporting the channel. And thank you. That's very generous of you. 411 now says, been here listening, but have to jet. Oh, well, thank you for stopping by. I hope you can catch the replay. Thank you for your stream tonight. Hit that thumbs up. Yes, everybody do that. It's free and it really helps the channel. Yeah. So thank you for sending that message along to 411 now. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, Yes, please do hit the thumbs up. It does help the channel and it helps for more of our friends to get notifications. 
Um, and for this channel and any other, if you don't get notifications right now, click the notification button again. I know that happens sometimes with YouTube. But for this channel, if you want to get an email notification from me, if somebody could please put my email in the um, chat, it's wasobsession at gmail.com, not what's the obsession, just what's obsession at gmail.com. I send out either a day before, maybe an hour before, maybe hours before, but sometime before I do a live stream, I always send out a notification. So hoping that you guys can come be here with us. So yeah. And oh, geez, Margie, thank you so much for the 999 super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. Enjoy your live streams. Thank you, Margie. And I'm so glad they're here. Thank you so much, my friend. Oh, Sherry, geez, Sherry, thank you so much for the $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Sherry. You are constantly supporting me in this channel. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You guys are being very generous tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And we have some new members. We have Country Sunshine Gail. Welcome, WTO member. And then we have Chris, like Chris. Don't say it wrong. It's Chris. Thank you so much for becoming a member and happy Friday to you too, sweetheart. And then also we got another one here. Clover is also a member. So Clover, welcome. Thank you for becoming a member as well. I have been doing something every week for members recently, and I'm going to be trying to do more and more because there are more and more of you. And I really appreciate that you, you know, take the time and spend the money to become a member. Or if you've been gifted a membership and you're deciding, do I want to do it again? I want to let you know that, yes, we do want you to be a member. We do want you to come back. So I am doing my best to get you that contact. Oh my gosh, an Aussie, Jen. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, comes in with a $20 super sticker. Thank you so much, Aussie, Jen. Aussie, Jen's been here since, I don't know, for a really long time. And I appreciate you, girl. And thank you so much for the support. You guys are so generous tonight. Thank you so much. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Let me get back down to the current chat. And again, if I didn't say hello to anybody, please, please, please don't take it personally. Sometimes I'll get emails. People think that I overlook them on purpose. I promise you that's not the case. Let's see. Is it Lele? Am I saying that right? Lele? Hi, dropping in. Lele's dropping in. Happy you're here. Happy you're dropping in, Lele. Nice to see you. Oh, my gosh. I always just hope I pronounce these right. Lulu Hernandez. My first stream, of course, had to be on the Chris Watts case. Of course. I mean, what else is there really? You know, I know what you're saying. Maheen um, Khan, welcome. How are you doing? So happy you're here. Cindy, hey, how's it going? Welcome. Nice to see you as well, Cindy. And oh, geez, Amanda, welcome. How are you doing? Thanks for saying hello. Hey, Donna, how's it going? Nice to see you as well. I think I already said hi to you, but hey, I'm saying hi again. And let's see, um, is it Mink Valor? Oh, that sounds so sassy and fancy. I love that. Mink Valor, welcome. How are you doing, my friend? Wilson Matt. Oh, Mick J. How are you doing, Mick J? Where'd Mick J go? I want to pin her. Hey, Mick J. How's it going? I am live. Did you not get the notification or the email? See, a lot of people haven't been getting notifications. That's what I was saying. So for this channel or any other one that you might want to get the notifications for, you might want to unsubscribe then resubscribe right away <laughs> and then click that notification bell again. So you will get wrong when your favorite channels not just this channel, but any of them. I want you to see all your favorite channels when they're going live. I don't know why that happens. It's really weird. Hey, M. Johnson, how's it going? Hey, Ruby Slippers. Oh, I love Wizard of Oz. Do you talk about the case? <laughs> yeah, I do talk about the case and people don't usually give that many. So I'm very grateful. Thank you guys. I'm not usually collecting super chats right off the bat. People are just being very generous tonight. I very much appreciate it. Yeah, of course, we're going to be talking about the case. Hey, Dollhouse Henderson, but I always do like to say hello to people and give it a little time in the beginning of the live stream, as do most creators, because you want to let people get those notifications and come into the room, because that's what it's all about, is community, so people can all chat, and we can talk together, and we can discuss things, so giving that little bit of time, I think, is okay. Hey, my girl, Nancy Ann, how are you doing? Nice to see you, my friend. <clears throat> all right. Hey, Jessica, how are you doing? And Kayla... And see, now I just want to say hello to everybody because I really feel terrible when people think that I ignore them intentionally because I would, I want you to come here and feel good, feel good about yourself, feel good about life. I don't want you to come here and feel like you're excluded. That's definitely not what we want for you. Okay. Hey, Raquel, how are you doing? <clears throat> Raquel says, this case is addicting to watch. I know the feeling. I hope they figure everything else out about this case for justice. Me too. Me too. Oh, good. Karen says she gets her notifications. Awesome. I'm really happy to hear that, Karen. So we got Christina Reynolds. Hi, how are you doing, Christina? And Doc, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it. You guys are being so kind to me tonight. Thank you so much for the support for myself and the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you, Kayla. And hi, Kayla, how are you doing? <laughs> All right, so I think what we're gonna do to start out is let's just take a look back at Shanann Watts' life before she even met Chris Watts. And my gosh, don't we wish that her life could have kept on that same trajectory and that she had never miss, met Chris Watts and she had never met this horrific fate that she met. Now, I was just reading through some different streams when I was doing research for this content tonight. And guys, it should go without saying nobody, nobody, no matter what anybody has to say or comment or anything like that, Nobody thinks that Shanann Watts deserved the horrible fate that she met. Nobody. I have been running this channel for three years now, and I can count on like one hand the number of grotesque comments that I've actually read where people were asserting such a terrible thing, like that Shanann deserved this. Nobody thinks that. And we are by no means saying that on this channel. I just need to be really clear about it because it's really important to me that nobody thinks that because that is just horrible. Oh. Hi, Chris D. How are you doing? Welcome. Nice to see you. All right, so I'm going to bring that into the stream, and this is going back to Shanann Watts' earlier days before she met Chris Watts, and specifically when she was working around the time that she was working for Dirty South Customs. Dirty South, Dirty South Custom Wheels is the full name. Edward, I said hi to you, right? I think I did, but it's always nice to see you, Edward. Okay, here we go. Hey, now for some reason, the screen just goes black for a second. It happens a lot of times when I'm doing Chris Watts live streams. Don't know why. We've kind of been talking about the spooky aspects of this case recently. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a technical glitch. Maybe it's I don't know how to work my computer. I don't know. But I promise you, I will be right back. It usually takes about 90 seconds for me to sign back in and all that stuff. Okay. Hopefully it won't happen, though. But everything else closed down, so hopefully it won't happen. All right. Here we go. Let's see obsession. So right now we are taking a deep look at the Watts case and all aspects of it as this month, August of 2023 is a five year anniversary of when Shanann Bella Salah. And obviously August of 2023 is when I initially created this video. This video is in my selection of videos on the Watts case that you can find on my channel. Last and baby Nico tragically lost their lives. So all this week and next week, we're going to be doing some special Watts videos and live streams. And I hope you are able to join us. This video is going to take a look at the life of Shanann Watts and who she was in her young adult life before she married Chris Watts. In 2006, Shanann managed a pagers and sell store in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The owner was Hisham Bedwan, also known as Hisham Abu Tabar. Hisham also owned Dirty South Customs. Shanann continued to work for Hisham and became a bookkeeper at Dirty South Customs, a shop for rappers and cool guys looking to soup up their wheels. Next, we have the 07 Escalade, all blacked out, limo tint, 26-inch WG215, matte black with chrome inserts. Also, Giovanna Edition two-tone grill package for the 07 Escalade. Now, I know some of you are wondering, you know, I might not have an 07 Escalade, although we can customize a grill for your vehicle. Anywhere from the hood to Hollywood, we got you covered at Dirty South Customs. You just let us know what you need, we got you covered. Shanann proved a valuable asset for her boss and managed both stores, which were 130 miles apart from one another. We got you covered. Next, I'm going to talk to you about the Chevy Nova. On the 72 Nova, we have 22-inch Giovanna Delars, matte black to match. With the stores being so far from one another, Shanann would have to zip around North Carolina in a custom Cadillac provided by her boss. She reportedly got plenty of speeding tickets, and hey, I probably would have too. You go, Shanann. So what I've done is I've come up with a concept, and it's called the Dirty South Edition Packages. Basically what that is, is if you have a car that you want to soup up, it covers it basically from head to toe, where it can be done basically in one day. Dirty South Edition, bronze packages, gold, silver, platinum, diamond, and it's all based the wheel size from 18 
all the way up to 26 years. Dirty South Customs. Yeah, so and I'm sure you guys your- got the picture there. That that gentleman that's talking right now is Hasham, who was her former boss. And Hasham was reportedly her friend right until her tragic end. I know that there were a couple of times when she was doing a live stream promoting Thrive and she would say, oh, Hasham, you know, she'd be addressing him. He was watching her live streams. And then Sherry said that she thinks that her brother and um, Shanann's brother and dad still work there. And that's what I've heard too, that they that they do some work for Hasham. Um, her dad is a general contractor. He does contracting work. And I do believe that this case, I don't know if it is for sure. I mean, I haven't seen any receipts or anything, but it's long been said that that is the case. Your vehicle, affordable. Starting off with the Dirty South Edition bronze package, which includes 18 inch wheels. The Dirty South Edition silver package, which includes 20 inch wheels. The Dirty South Edition gold package, which includes 22 inch wheels. The Dirty South Edition platinum package, which includes 24 inch wheels. And finally, the Dirty South Edition Diamond Package, which includes 26-inch wheels. Everyone who knew Shanann knew that she was an awesome saleswoman. She had the personality, the confidence, and the looks to go with it. All of the ingredients that make an awesome saleswoman. There was a controversy in 2009. It was a lawsuit titled Key versus Dirty South Custom Sound and Wheels. And we're gonna go much deeper into that lawsuit um, after the contents of this video. And it also named Shanann King as a co-owner of Dirty South Custom Sound and Wheels. I wasn't able to find out a whole lot of details. Since then, I have found a whole lot of details, by the way. (laughs) Regarding exactly what this lawsuit was about, but it should be noted that the amended complaint against Chenan and Dirty South was dismissed without prejudice. Dirty South Customs is real big on audio and security. We don't want you to forget that we guarantee our pricing on anything when it comes to 12 volt, whether it's TVs, speakers, subwoofers, amplifiers, a lot of competitors out there. Now, Shanann had graduated from Pinecrest High School in 2002, where she had met a gentleman named Leonard King, I guess a young man named Leonard King. They got married shortly after graduating from high school in 2002, and he was going to school to become a lawyer, and that marriage did not last very long. By the time she was 23 years old, she was divorced from Mr. Leonard King. Single and divorced at age 23, Shanann moved to Charlotte and focused on building a home she could flip for profit. At age 25, Shanann Watts apparently built this home and she said it was the proudest accomplishment of her life because she did it herself. So as you can see, this is quite an extravagant home for a 25 year old and you know she may have been saving her money may have been getting some money from her boss at dirty south i don't know what the deal is but let's take a look at this beautiful home (laughs) so here's the exterior it's interesting does this home remind you a little bit of their home at 2825 saratoga trail in addition to a lot of the furniture and the furnishings being the same. There's something about the layout and the architecture and, you know, the the open space, even even the kitchen just reminds me personally a lot of their home at 2825 Saratoga Trail. Check out that bedroom. And that Back deck, nice. So it was in the year 2010 when Shanann Watts met Chris Watts. I should say Shanann King met Chris Watts. And they were together for a couple years while she was living in that house. And I imagine he was staying with her a lot of the time because she lived in this great, big, gorgeous house. But it was this very house that we just saw pictures of in this beautiful interior that we've heard stories of being broken into 
back in, well, the year was 2012. Let's take a look at some of those Facebook posts. The lady on the phone to 911 said she had worked for Belmont Police for the last 15 years and has never had a break-in for the house. They get a lot of car break-ins, but that is it. I think my boss pissed someone off and they followed me thinking it was him. I'm not sure. I have no idea. All I know is knowing that I was dumb enough to think it was a false alarm and walked into the house while he slash she were in there still. Never do that again. I was running late and the call was so fast, I assumed I tricked the system to go off by mistake. So this next post says, Mom, I'll be fine and my schedule just changed two weeks ago and only this last two days I was left that early. But I'll be fine. Police will be checking around here and I told all my neighbors. So we are going to be good. Thank you. Love you. Thanks, everyone. You know, just a mama checking in on her girl and Shanann dutifully following up and letting her mother know that she's okay. Mark Jameson, Chris Watts' best friend from childhood, says to Shanann, are you serious? Someone broke into your house? And she replies, Mark, yes. I walked into the house after the security company told me the glass break went off in my room. I assumed it was a false alarm because I just ran back through the house because I forgot my phone. I walked into the room, so door closed and the police found it open. So far, nothing taken. They smashed alarm box, so I think that scared them, hopefully. My brother is helping me secure the doors better right now. Chris and I put a sofa in front of them in the back of the house. Now, I just want to say a couple things. So this is Mark Jamison, the same Mark Jamison that you may hear interview um, footage of with law enforcement after this tragedy occurred that took the lives of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and baby Nico tragically. Um, he was interviewed by law enforcement. You know, he, in that interview, maintains that he and Chris have always been best friends, that this all comes as a great surprise to him. He says that he himself never saw anything that was suspect about Shanann, but he always had it in the back of her mind that there was something a little off about her because Chris's family was so, like, firmly against her, which seems to be the case, according to everyone, including Chris's family. Um... And then also, I would just like to know, what do you guys think about this home break-in? I've heard a lot of people speculate different things about this, that it wasn't real, that it was staged, that it, you know, was connected to something else. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys uh, think about this reported home break-in. So, you know, Chris Watts, best friend at this time. Chris Watts is in love with this woman, Shanann. He's checking in on her, maybe checking in to see if something's fishy or if this is like, you know, all straight up. I don't know what the deal was. Okay, so then Shanann says, as far as I see, no, I think it had something to do with my old job, the one I just left. She's referring to Dirty South Custom Wheels there. My boss was threatened the day before I was broken into, so I hope they are not coming back. Mark Jameson says, wait, to quit that tires place? Dirty South or Custom South, whatever it was called. And Shanann says, yeah. It's really like, what? So then Shanann replies to Mr. Mark Jameson. And says, oh, I just want to say thank you so much, Lulu Hernandez, for the super chat. I really appreciate it. You guys have been so generous. I thank you so very much. I am very grateful. Lulu says, hope I'm doing this right. First super chat on YouTube ever. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you so much. Love the content. Thank you so much, Lulu. We are so super happy that you're here. Um, Just thank you. Thank you. Says, I still have my truck. I quit because he couldn't cash my paychecks because no money. Yeah, that's always a bad sign. I've had that happen, but I'm back to the post. He became an ASS because I couldn't stay after work, after working a 12 hour shift to stay and waste time going over nothing. I used to, when I wasn't sick, I used to always volunteer to stay after, but I couldn't stand or function after 12 hours on my feet working. I'm just going to nursing school now. I am in the ASN program. I will have my RN next December. Any other questions, Mr. Mark? LOL, you need to hurry up and get home. Mr. Christopher needs his best friend.
So the next Facebook post after Shanann is talking about her house being broken into and she's back and forth with Mark Jameson, Chris Watts, childhood best friend, is their engagement announcement on March 2012. So this all happened really quickly. It was just when I was doing this project, I realized how quickly things moved. It was a month after that, they went out and visited Colorado and, you know, Shanann is liking the weather. She likes the altitude, the um, lowered humidity. She says it makes her lupus feel better. It makes her joints feel better. Um, it's on June 14th. She says, I could never wear this in Charlotte. The humidity is terrible. It's 85 here right now and I'm not sweating. It's my favorite part of Colorado. Okay, so this is like three, four months after they got engaged. Hey, we meet Dieter for the first time. So she's at her friend Jenna's house, Jenna and her husband, who they stayed with before they moved to 2825 Saratoga Trail in Frederick, Colorado. There's little young baby Dieter. And on June 28, 2012, at Chris's job for interview for time being, so this is, you know, just a few months after they got engaged. He's already interviewing for jobs out in Colorado. I didn't realize how quickly this all happened until I was doing this project. Like I just said, did you guys know that? June 28th at Chris's job and they all love him here. Yeah, the point that I was making there was it was like, you know, Shanann and Chris were together for about a year before they got engaged. Then they got engaged. Once they got engaged, their move towards Colorado was like fast and furious. Um, I just, like I said here, I did not realize exactly how fast that was moving until I was researching for this video. It, it was fast. It was real fast. They said they were all glad the day he started. Proud of Christopher Watts. He is a hard worker. Jeez, this is moving quick. And here's Chris smiling, all happy at his job. You know, by all accounts, he was an excellent mechanic. He was a talented mechanic. He was very skilled at what he did. On August 17th, we say, I'm officially no longer a homeowner. So the house in North Carolina was sold and they were looking for a new home in Colorado. August 17th, 2012. A lot of competitors out there. I agree, even the internet. Although, no matter what quote you get, we guarantee we will beat the price even after you make the purchase. So don't forget that. Also, tires. No now, guys, Hasham was quite the salesman. Can we all agree on that? No matter what price you get on tires and anywhere in the city of Charlotte and beyond, we guarantee our tire pricing no matter what. We also road force balance here. Anything you need to your car, like I said, whether it's interior, mounting balancing, tires, audio, Pricing guaranteed. We understand how it is out there. So we want to take care of you and we want you to come to Dirty South Customs and we appreciate all your business and your support. One good friend told me with great power comes great responsibility. And I just want you to know that we're going to be very responsible for you. So all you got to do is come talk to us and we'll take care of you. I don't care what anybody else says about Dirty South Customs. You know that we've been there in the past and we're going to be there in the future for you. And I want to just say thank you for all of your support. And if there's anything we can do for you, you let us know. And again, don't let anybody, any of these haters get it twisted and anybody else from all over Charlotte to Atlanta, to the whole South, we're putting it on the map, period. And we're not stopping here. We're moving above and beyond. Thanks to you, my dreams will become your dreams. Anything that you want and I can help, I'll be more than helped to do it. Thank you for all your support. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back with some more Dirty South Lifestyle. Dirty South Custom, giving you the best in automotive accessories for any make and model, including classic, old school, luxury, tuner, SUV, and even off-road. And now with the all-new Dirty South Edition package, it's even easier to get all the things you want at a price you can afford. That's right. Wheels and tires, alarms with keyless entry and remote starts and stuff, navigation, much more. The more you get, the more you save. Come in now for the best selection and ask about our Dirty South Edition package. Two convenient locations and on the web at www.dirtysouthwheels.com. You know you want it. You know we've got it. The South's premier automotive superstore, Dirty South Customs.
All right, so yeah. Okay, so that was Shanann as her role as the Dirty South Custom Wheels Manager, and she also did some work for she, I was just gonna call him different. I was gonna call him Hasham um, when through in a cell phone store or something like that. So she was working for him to a couple capacities. So he definitely found her to be a valuable employee and wanted to use her skills in his business as much as he could. So what do you guys think about that? I'm going to pull a couple comments up here. Um, yeah, I know the name Dirty South sounds so shady. I know, Karen, it does, doesn't it? I mean, I certainly wouldn't name a business like, but you know, it's just, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to reflect on my business in the way that I think Dirty South does. But that's just me. That's just me. Dirty empanada. Oh, we're going to be talking about the dirty empanada. Don't worry. Oh, where did that go? The, is the chat moving too fast? I can't really keep up with it. But, oh, hey, thanks, little Nancy. I just washed it. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are so kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, let's see. Ozzy Jen says, there was something very wrong with Chris Watts' ability to speak up for himself. No one else's fault. That's right. He needed to step up and not explode into a rage. Yeah. You know, so I think what Aussie Jen is touching on here, I hope I'm not speaking for you incorrectly, Aussie Jen, but, you know, people say like, oh, you know, Shanann forced him into moving across the country. She picked him up out of North Carolina and made him move to, um, to, into the Denver area in Colorado. And, you know, there, when I'm looking at certain things or reading some certain things or thinking about this case in a certain way, I, you know, I am of that opinion at times, but, and the next thought I go to the same thing that Aussie Jen is pointing out here is that. He was his own person. He was a grown ass adult and he needed to be making his own decisions and he needed to stand up for himself in life, which is something he never did, which I think is one of the unique ingredients in this case that allowed this tragedy to happen. If you notice the pattern of Chris Watts throughout his life, he would go from, you know, just being this kind of malleable, like slithery, like kind of chameleon parasite of a person is how I think of him as being, who would sort of latch on to a strong female figure in his life. And as soon as he was done with that one female figure, he'd literally dump him cold and move on to the next. That's what he did to his mother when he met Shanann. And that's what he was doing to Shanann just so soon after he, according to him and Nicole Kessinger, just so soon after they met one another. If you hear a crazy person screaming in the background, that is my child. He is currently a gamer. And I always say, honey, I'm gonna be doing a live stream now. Could you please quiet down for a little while? It's like, oh yes, mommy then happen. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, so let's see, Sherry says he wanted to get away from his mother. Well, yeah, she was, you know, and just, just so you guys know, one thing I try to really stick to on this channel is I don't like to talk. Let's not ever trash any of the victim's families. And yes, I do include the Watts parents as being in that category. And obviously Shanann's families, I can't even imagine the pain that they've had to endure and what they've gone through. But, you know, there's also facts that, you know, we can talk about that aren't trashing them. And it does seem like she was a little bit of an overbearing kind of like commandeering personality. And um, it does seem like she, Shanann, I don't think Shanann really ever ha was going to have a shot with her. She decided she did not like Shanann from go. And I like Cindy Watts. I have a really soft spot in my heart for Cindy Watts. But, um, you know, I, I feel like that's, that's true, you know. Uh, let's see. <laughs> see Molson man says the dirty south has some shady parts let's be honest oh that ain't that true Molson man yes 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 <laughs> for I know four time huh? the gaming that's oh, just so crazy <laughs> yes yeah, he doing his own live stream gaming or whatever he, he I don't know that's what he I don't even know what's going on I mean I check to make sure at times you know that things aren't like weird with what he's doing but I don't understand the whole gaming world. I just don't. Let's see. Long time lurkers. Are you a long time lurker, Tracy? <laughs> Hi, Tracy. How are you doing? Um, Muck Boy says, uh, Florida Boy here says, in South Florida, there used to be a clown riding around on cars at a car lot. And he would say, this car can be yours for 99 Nah, day. <laughs> late night hours in the channel guide channel these commercials are what are you talking about i think we're just all talking about dirty south interesting name right 
<laughs> You've been binging on these videos. Listen, AH, who's AH? AH, AH, who's AH? Uh, I just can't think right now. But thank you. Thank you so much for watching. And welcome, Tracy. How are you doing? Oh, I said welcome. Welcome again. Hey, Maria, how are you doing? All right, so let's go. Do we want to go into Nicole Kessinger's earlier? Let's look at the um, the court documents that um, spell out that shady thing that happened at Dirty South, where Dirty South and Shanann Watts as a co-defendant was named in a lawsuit. And I think all I can really do for you guys right now is kind of like read through it. I actually just finally found this shortly before the live stream. So I haven't even read through this anytime recently. So we're going to be going through this kind of for the first time together. All right. And I'm just going to turn off my video so I can squint and stuff as I try to read this because my eyes just ain't what they used to be, guys. They just ain't what they used to be. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Well, Sub Rosa was feeling you, Keith. She says, um, cable access commercials are the best commercials. So there you go. All right, I'm going to make this bigger so we can all see this. You can read along if you want, or I'm just going to do my best to read it to you. <sighs> so we have um, Matthew Key. He's the plaintiff versus Dirty South Custom Sound and Wheels. Dirty South Custom Inc. Hasham Bedwan, American General Financial Services. And then there's two additional parties, and that is Robin Worthy and Shanann King. So y'all may know that Shanann was Shanann Rusek, and then she was Shanann King um, after she married her first husband. Then, of course, she was Shanann Watts. So it looks like who's named the entity Dirty South um, to two incorporated capacities. The um, owner or president of that um, corporation, Hasham. Um, a fi some financial service company, and then two additional individuals, Robin and Shanann. All right, so this is the, <clears throat> gives a district. All right, order. James C. Deaver, district judge. On March 19th, 2009, defendant, American General Financial Services of America, now known as AGFS or defendant, filed a motion to dismiss plaintiff Matthew Key's first amended complaint. And then it gives a citation on April 9th, I'm um, sorry, April 8th of 2009. Plaintiff Matthew Key, or he'll be known as Key or the plaintiff, filed a response in opposition. On April 21st, 2009, defendant replied, as explained below, the court grants defendant's motion to dismiss. In considering defendant's motion to dismiss, the court has applied the governing standard, and then it gives a citation, it gives a few citations, and under that standard, the court accepts the first amended complaint's factual allegations as true, but need not accept the legal conclusions drawn from the facts, it gives another citation. Similarly, a court need not accept as true unwarranted inferences unreasonable conclusions or arguments, and it gives another citation. AGFS provides retail financing in North Carolina. Plaintiff contracted with a defendant, Dirty South Custom Sound and Wheels, for window tinting and the installation of certain equipment in his car. Plaintiff contends, so the plaintiff again is Matthew Key, the Dirty South Custom Wheels botch the job and seeks damages from Dirty South and other defendants related to Dirty South. And that would include financial, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Shanann King or Shanann Watts. Plaintiff finance parts of the purchase from Dirty South. Plaintiff contends that AGFS violated state and federal law in connection with the financing and seeks damages from American whatever financial company. AGFS contends that the plaintiff failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted and seeks the dismissal of the plaintiff's claims against all the defendants. Not surprisingly, the plaintiff opposes the motion to dismiss. In count two, the plaintiff contends that AGFS debt, collection practices, and credit reporting violated North Carolina's unfair and deceptive trade practices. It gives a citation. 
To the extent that the plaintiff bases this claim on AGF's alleged credit reporting, however, the Fair Credit Reporting Act citation. Moreover, to that extent, the plaintiff relies on AGFS debt collection practices, the North Carolina Debt Collection Act, and then some more citations. Accordingly, the court grants AGFS's motion to dismiss count two. Okay, count two is gone. In count three, plaintiff contends that AGFS violated North Carolina's general citation, the character, extent, uh, or amount of his debt. <clears throat> and then it states, no debt collector shall collect or attempt to collect a debt or obtain information concerning a consumer by any fraudulent, deceptive, or misleading representation. Such representations include, but are not limited to, falsely representing character, extent, or amount of a debt against a consumer or its status in legal proceedings, falsely representing that a collector is in any way connected with any agency of the federal, state, or local government, or falsely representing the creditor's rights or intentions. Gives a citation and says, because plaintiff's allegations in count three says nothing about a legal proceeding, the plaintiff has failed to state a claim under the citation Accordingly, the court grants AGFS's motion to dismiss on count three. In count four, the plaintiff alleges that AGFS failed to provide him with an adverse action notice after allegedly denying his application for credit. He also alleges that AGFS defamed him by reporting the charges at issue to the credit reporting agencies when it, hit, when it, when it had conflicting statements that caused it to have serious doubts about whether the billing statements and charges were true. Okay, so this is getting to the heart of it where Shanann Watts is concerned. The plaintiff is, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be outlined in this document or if I got like a second motion or response here, but it is alleged that the plaintiff, Matthew Key, was charged charges from Dirty South and also on behalf of that uh, um, other co-defendant, Robin, I don't remember her last name, and Shanann King, that weren't real. Basically, that they were trying to scam money from the plaintiff, Matthew Key, that was not due to them, okay? <clears throat> Plaintiff's FCRA claim against the financial company is not a model of clarity. It was kind of funny. Compare ID, citation, okay. Critically, however, the plaintiff specifically alleges that the defendant, Shanann King, a co-owner of Dirty South Custom Wheels, now, that's really interesting here that she's mentioned as a co-owner because even when you hear Shanann Watts talk about her own history, she doesn't ever say that she was a co-owner of Dirty South Custom Wheels. So it kind of makes you wonder what was going on behind the scenes, maybe in the cooked books with Dirty South Custom Wheels between that company and Shanann that where she might at times be labeled as a co-owner, perhaps when it would behoove them financially. This is just an assumption I'm making. I mean, it's the only way that I can kind of read this, okay? Um, let's see. So, oh wait, let me read that sentence again. Critically, however, plaintiff specifically alleges that the defendant, Shanann King, not the financial institution, initially denied his application for credit. Accordingly, plaintiff has not plausibly alleged that the financial institution took adverse action against him under FCRA. Thus, the plaintiff also fails to state an FCRA claim in count four. Let me just take a sip of something and drink here. All right. As for the alleged defamation reference in count four, plaintiff seeks to avoid the FCRA's limitation of liability provision. And then there's citation, citation, citation. These documents, however, do not support this allegation. Thus, defamation claim fails to escape the effect of, and then there's another citation. A lot of what law is about, right? Citing precedent cases. Alternatively, plaintiff's defamation claims fails because he concedes that AGFS never reported to the credit reporting agencies that his account was late or past due. Rather, AGFS reported to the plaintiff that he had an open account with AGFS. Such a statement is not defamatory as a matter of law, gives a lot of citations. 
Accordingly, the court grants AGFS motion to dismiss count four. In count six, the plaintiff alleges that AGFS violated the Truth in Lending Act, a whole bunch of citations, <clears throat> because a financing, financing agreement between the plaintiff and Dirty South Custom Wheels establishes that AGFS was not the creditor under TILA. The claim fails. See another citation and more citations. Accordingly, the court grants AGFS motion to dismiss count six. In count seven, the plaintiff alleges breach of contract under the North Carolina law. See a citation. Plaintiff, however, concedes that he failed to comply with the contract's monthly payment obligations. See another citation. In count 10, plaintiff, plaintiff alleges that AGFS violated the North Carolina Retail and Installment Sales Act by failing to release its security interest once he paid all of the sums of which he was obligated. The court, however, may take judicial notice that AGFS never took security interest in the plaintiff's household goods as reflected in the absence of any Article 9 financing statement and record which plaintiff is named as a debtor. Whew, how boring is that? Okay. Thus, the plaintiff fails to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. So he's basically saying you're filing something that doesn't really exist under law. There's no basis for this claim. Further, but maybe if you went about it a different way, there would be. That's how I'm reading it. Further, to the extent that extent, the plaintiff relies on the alleged references in his credit reporting to a security interest, the claim fails under another citation. In count 12, the plaintiff alleges, upon information and belief, defendant's actions constituted a conspiracy. Defendant's false billing constitute actions and furtherance of that conspiracy, and plaintiff was injured as a result of that conspiracy when he acquired another loan in order to pay the bill. Okay, so let's break that down. So this, this paragraph is important here. The paragraph that's at the top of the page right now, Again, it says in count 12, the plaintiff alleges upon information and belief, the defendant's actions constituted a conspiracy. Defendant's false billing constitute actions and furtherance of that conspiracy. And plaintiff was injured as a result of that conspiracy. And we acquired another loan in order to pay the bill. So essentially what that's saying, and this is all coming back to me now crystal clear, is that Dirty South and that Robin person and Shanann King charged him for things that they should have not been charged for. He believing that those charges were legitimate, took out a loan from a financial institution to cover those charges that the, he then discovered, according to he, the plaintiff, Matthew Key, were bullshit, basically. Okay. So it then says, <clears throat> to create civil liability for conspiracy, there must have been a wrongful act resolving an injury to another committed by one or more of the conspirators pursuant to the common scheme and in furtherance of the objective claim, or I'm sorry, citation. To state a claim for release, the complainant must plausibly allege that one, a conspiracy, two, wrongful acts done by certain of the alleged conspirators in furtherance of that conspiracy, and three, so all three of them, injury as a result of that conspiracy. Plaintiff's allegations of a civil conspiracy involving AGFS fails to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. Accordingly, the court grants AGF's motion to dismiss to dismiss count 12. Let's see. And that's actually all I have on that case there. I feel like there is another filing that has to do with this lawsuit. And I'm going to try to find it while I'm playing for you um, some of the stuff about Nicole Kessinger, because I know that there's a filing in there somewhere that more specifically um, discusses, you know, what Shanann and the other co-defendants role may have been in that whole dirty, dirty South dealings that this plaintiff, Matthew Key, alleges. So, so many people have asked me what that is all about. What is this talk about, you know, Shanann trying to escape some, you know, financial liabilities of a financial crime in connection with Dirty South when she was back in North Carolina? What is that all about? I don't think that what I read to you necessarily answers the whole question, but hopefully you get an idea of, you know, kind of the tone of what everything is about. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So wait, honey bun, just a little personal business with us here. Kelly email sent. I hope you get this one. Okay. 
Awesome. I will check it while I'm behind the scenes doing some stuff, honey, but I'll let you know because I really want to connect with you on that. Okay. Hey, um, let's see. Who did I just see? Did I see Anaphylaxis? Hi, Anaphylaxis. How are you doing, my friend? Always wonderful to see you here. Um, hey, seriously, how's it going? Let's see. How you doing? Nice to see you, seriously. So I don't know. Did you guys get anything from from that which I just read or not really. So the, the the bulk of it is where Shanann Watts is concerned is that it is said that she and this other person who was named Robin, I don't remember her last name, on behalf of Dirty South Wheels was billing out, um, you know, was billing people for monies that weren't really due to them. So they were basically claiming that it was financial fraud and that they were asking for money that wasn't really due to them. And if I can find that other filing somewhere in the recesses of the internet that's back there, I think it's going to spell it out a little more clearly. So, I mean, it is some bad stuff. If, you know, she was guilty of doing that, it certainly is a financial crime, whether the course dismissed it or not based on how the complaint was filed. Um, but you know, there's, there's, there's some shady stuff there. There, there is. Um, but again, it is a bit unclear. Let's see. <laughs> no, he definitely does not have 140 IQ. I talked about this last week. I is a behavioral therapist. I administer IQ tests to young people, but you kind of get an idea of what they're about and what a certain score means and reflected in a person's like presence. And it, he's just, I think we all know he doesn't have 140 IQ. Yeah. Jen says, um, Aussie Jen says the crime is bad, but it happens a lot in business. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of businesses doing dirty things out there, right? I'm sure that a lot of you have been victims of those dirty things that businesses do, right? I mean, I venture to say, I know I have. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Media, the creative agency. Hi, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Says, the lawsuit is law, fair, and sour grapes. Not anything other than the plaintiff throwing a bunch of crap at the wall. Nonsense. You might be totally right, media, media creative agency. That might be completely what it is. Absolutely. It's fully possible. Yeah. Ash K says, right, media. Yeah. Oh, your daughter's an auditor. Wow. That's, that's a job that most of us are scared of. <laughs> no one wants to be audited. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, well, I'm going to see if, yeah, that's right. Colorado no longer has death penalty. At the time that Chris Watts was sentenced, let's be real, everybody knew that the death penalty was going out the door. Nobody believed that the death penalty was going to be withstanding even throughout the rest of that year. So to say that he, plea, that he pled guilty to avoid the death penalty, I think we all know is just a, a load of crap, right? Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So let's take a look. So let's shift over to Nicole Kessinger. So Nicole Kessinger, our girl, Nicole Kessinger. <laughs> Such a pretty little peach, isn't she? Such a pretty little peach. I just want to squeeze her cheeks. Um, you know, again, many people have commented in comments on my videos or here in chat have talked something about, you know, one of the crimes that Nicole Kessinger had committed because we know that she had been arrested before. And I'll tell you that Plunder, you know, did the research. All credit to Plunder. I'm going to link her video in the description. I've already linked her channel. If you guys are already not subscribed to Plunder, please go subscribe to her. She's absolutely wonderful. She is one of the best YouTube true crime researchers out there. She always gets her facts aligned, her ducks all in a row before she puts out content. I absolutely admire her. She's fantastic. And if you aren't subscribed to her, you're definitely missing out because she's wonderful. Um, so she, a long time ago, had done some videos that talked about Nicole Kessinger's previous arrests. She did one and then two. So there are two arrests of Nicole Kessinger that we do know about that are legitimate. So she talks about, um, I'm going to play a little bit of her video. I'm not going to play the whole thing. So if we don't get to this part, I'll just tell you. She talks about that in one of the arrest filings that chronologically would have been the first one, they, um, the wording, you know, indicates that this was a second offense. So then we're wondering, she's wondering, and now we're wondering, what was that first offense then? 
So the story goes, well, I'll tell you what the rumor is um, that people believe may have been the case that has to do with the stabbing in the, the yeah. Um, after we watch this from Plunder, no one should wear a brown. No one should wear a brown bikini. What's up with that? Who was it that sent me that really funny email recently? Oh, gosh, I'll have to bring that up and show it to you. Hey, Ashley Victoria, we are talking about the past of Shanann Watts and Nicole Kessinger. So, yeah. Yeah, she's such a pretty little peach. Such a pretty little, really the pretty little peach, Nicole Kessinger. No. All right. Let me present. She ain't no pretty peach. You, you know, you guys know what she is. All right. So I just want to pick up right around the point where she starts to talk about the actual arrests and whatnot. So this is Plunder today. And she says, you know, she's introducing her videos. And I think she sounded great even before she says, oh, excuse my voice. I've learned how to throw my voice and things like that better. She was a little like, you know, looking at her previous work like I do all the time. And you're like, oh, that wasn't like the greatest. But I thought she was always awesome. But she says that about herself. But here we go people's issue is with her so that's why i didn't want this to get lost so watch all this coming up if you want to see her arrest history and then we'll have it here hopefully forever in my youtube archives thanks for watching see what's coming up subscribe to plunder Let's look at Nicole Lee Kessinger's arrest record as sent to me from the Aurora Police Department. They've already redacted what they feel they should out of this report, and I will redact even. Wait, I just want to clarify this. I just saw seriously saying, oh, where'd you go seriously? Oh, that I just rewatched Plunder's video. It was a re-upload. It was a re-upload because what happened with Plunder a couple years ago was a ton of true crime channels, including myself, like got kicked out of the YouTube partnership program, like so many channels that were doing true crime did um, for a while, which means that, you know, that's a program through which you can get monetized through. And so if anybody who has over like a thousand subscribers and so many watch hours, you can apply to this program and then you can, your videos will start to get monetized, which I'm telling you, everybody who does videos on YouTube, just about, it has a monetization program in place. I mean, I've heard, know a lot of channels say, oh, I don't make money on YouTube, but they do. And there's certain ways that you can tell, but I'm not going to out them right here. It's not what I'm trying to do right now. But part of her like agreement that she had to make with YouTube was that she, because YouTube at this point, YouTube wanted more of the true crime creators to put their face on camera. You know, Plunder says they wanted to be a bunch of talking heads. That's her characterization of it. Because Plunder used to just, she wanted to do just documentary type video so she would never appear on camera. So they made her take down a certain number of her past videos. She tried to archive them on different platforms, but she said it was kind of a messy endeavor to do that. So that's why a lot of her material was taken down. And now she has to go and dig for it to find it even herself again to put it back up. So that's why it was a re upload. Yeah, she's a totally legit channel. She's fabulous. All right, without further ado, here we go. Further personal information. I'm not going to dox her or anyone else, but I just want to describe what happened when Nicole, the infamous mistress of Christopher Watts, disobeyed the police and ended up in jail. After giving the details of her address and phone number, which I won't show, even though this is from 2007, the police list Nicole Kessinger's place of birth as Colorado, her occupation as a bookkeeper back then for Beeline Acoustics, Buckley Quincy. She was a single American non-Hispanic woman who spoke English, five feet two inches tall, 105 pounds, slim build, fair complexion, left-handed. I noticed that previously in her, I want to call them interrogation videos, but her interviews, her in I see what you guys are saying in chat. I just want to say, and I think you know this about my channel. I don't play people's videos unless I give them proper due credit. Don't play all the videos. Wait until they've been out at least a week. Like I wouldn't grab someone's video. I mean, not even, I've never even kind of sort of thought of doing this and then, you know, play it on my channel, like the next day or in the next few days, always with permission, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's really good to use the proper ethics and all of that when you are using someone else's material because man, it is really hard. These like upload videos, 
that we do that I mostly do on this channel, those like edited videos, you know, where it's not a live stream when you're not there, just talking the whole time. They are an absolute shitload of work. I can't even describe to you. I mean, you have to get the idea. You have to do your research. You have to check your facts. You have to get all your material in order. You have to get your videos. You have to get your audio. You have to get your pictures. You have to get everything that you're going to put in your content. So you put it all together. You edit it like crazy. You edit it like crazy some more. And this whole process for like a 20 minute video is probably going to take about 20 hours. It's a lot of work. I just wanted to say that. Okay. For Miss One video interview that was released during the time of the Watts tragedy. Brown eyes, brown hair, long. Her charges and offenses included disturbing the peace, loud, unusual noises, disorderly conduct, failure to obey order from a police officer, obstructing peace officer or fireman, unarmed and resident. It looks like it took place during a time where she might have been hanging out with her stepbrother, I believe, and others. Let's take a look at the details. Nicole Kessinger was only 19 years of age, almost 20, when this incident took place on June 8th, 2007. But already the young future mistress of Chris Watts would have an unhealthy disrespect for law enforcement that ended up landing her in jail even when some of her acquaintances at the same incident didn't end up in jail. According to the Aurora Police Department, on June 8, 2007, Officer Chadley Roberts was working off-duty at the Victoria Crossing apartment complex. My hours were 2200 hours to 0200 hours. I was on routine foot patrol around 040 hours when I heard loud music and yelling. I was approximately 100 yards away in a parking lot on the other side of an adjacent apartment building. As I approached, I could see through the back sliding glass door that there was a party at this particular address. I went to the front door and knocked. The music was so loud that they did not hear me knocking. I then banged on the front door again. A few seconds later, the music was turned down a bit and I heard through the door someone say, shh, it's the effing cops. I then heard the deadbolt lock turn. I knocked again, but no one answered. I knocked a third time and said, open the door or you are going to make things worse. The music continued to play and I could hear people talking and laughing. On June 8th, 2007 was a Friday night. At 055 hours, I called for a patrol unit to assist me. While I waited for the cover officer, I stood approximately 25 yards to the west of the building so I could see if anyone attempted to leave through either the front or back door. As I stood there, the music and yelling continued. Officer Ponich arrived around 0100 hours. We walked to the back sliding door. The vertical blinds were pulled open and we could see directly into the apartment. As we walked up to the door, the parties inside the apartment saw us standing there. A male, later identified as JP, I'll call him, was sitting at the kitchen table with two other males and a female who appeared to be much younger. There were also two females and another male standing in the kitchen. I observed a bottle of whiskey and a shot glass on the counter, which the male quickly picked up and hid. The male was also smoking something but I could not see what he was holding. It appeared to be marijuana, not a cigarette. I told JP to open the door so we could talk. He just looked at us and smiled. <laughs> I'm just thinking of someone looking at the cop. <laughs> She's so cute. I love her. Oh, he just looked at us and smiled. That's pretty funny. Someone just staring at a cop, probably high out of his mind and smiling. <laughs> and smiling at the cop. Again, I told him to open the door. He stood up and asked why. I explained that I am giving him a lawful order to open the door because the music is still loud and I can see alcohol and no one looks old enough to be drinking. JP then walked over to the TV and turned the music off but still refused 
to open the door. I told him if he does not open the door, I will break the glass. At that point, he asked if we had a warrant. I explained that we did not need one and he needs to open the door immediately or he will go to jail. I could hear everyone inside the apartment and the two males who were sitting at the table continually told JP to open the door. Those males were later identified as NH and RK. So the RK is the one I believe is related to Nicole Kessinger, even though his last name isn't Kessinger. He shares the last name of Nicole's mom. And by the way, all of this started, it seems, by another citizen calling police and making a noise complaint. So sounds like rowdy kids at a house party. It could happen to anyone, of course, but the trouble started when they refused to comply with these police officers. At one point, I told JP to listen. I told JP to listen to his friends and open the door, but he refused to open the door. He then walked up and tried to close the vertical blinds. At that point, I swung my baton with medium force, striking the glass door, hoping to get JP's attention so he would open the door. He stepped back and stood there. The entire time we were standing there, a female, later identified as Nicole Kessinger, was telling him not to open the door. At one point, JP looked as if he was going to come outside, but then Kessinger grabbed his arm and told him not to open the door. I gave JP several more lawful orders to open the door, but he refused to comply. At that point, I made the decision to bust the glass door. I was concerned for the safety of the other females who were inside the apartment. There was underage drinking, what I believe to be drug use, and the unknown of how many other people might be in the apartment and what their ages were. As soon as I busted the glass, a strong odor of marijuana came through the door. When the glass busted, the party started running towards the back of the apartment. I immediately drew my weapon and ordered everyone outside. JP and Kessinger were immediately searched and placed into custody. The other parties were brought out, searched, and identified. The female who was originally sitting at the table was identified as redacted. She admitted she was only blank years old. I asked her how much she had to drink and she stated two to three shots a few hours earlier. I asked her about the marijuana and she said she did not smoke any of it. I asked her who did, but she stated she did not know. As I spoke with her, I observed a strong odor of a consumed alcoholic beverage on her breath. I then identified the male who was standing in the kitchen as AC. He admitted that he had three or four shots of whiskey. I also observed an odor of consumed alcoholic beverage on his breath. I then contacted P.S., she was angry and very uncooperative. She stated she had not had anything to drink all night. When I asked her about the marijuana, she stated she had not smoked any. She was not issued a summons and released to her mother. I then contacted H and K. Both parties were very cooperative and a determination was made that they had not been drinking. I asked Kay about the alcohol and who brought it. He said that he thought it was already at the apartment when they arrived. I then asked him about the marijuana. He stated he doesn't do drugs and he stated he did not know who exactly was smoking. Both H and K were released from the scene. C was issued a summons for underage consumption and released from the scene. Blank was also issued a summons for underage consumption and released to her parents. Kessinger and JP were taken to APD jail and bonded on failure to obey, disturbing the peace and obstruction. At jail, Kessinger made the voluntary statement, quote, the alcohol and marijuana were brought there they weren't ours. While JP was waiting to be processed, he made the statement to me, quote, what you did was unnecessary. No wonder people call cops pigs. So the address listed 
for Kessinger is the same address, it appears, where the party was held, even though Nicole claims that the alcohol and marijuana wasn't hers. It may have been, it may have been someone else she lived with. It may have been that someone else brought the substances to Nicole's place. Of course, it sounds like a minor incident that turned major when it didn't have to. I mean, who hasn't partied as a teenager, smoked some weed, and drank alcohol? I don't fault Nicole Kessinger for being a typical teenager. After all, marijuana is legal in many states these days, including Colorado. So yes, this was 14 years ago. Laws were different. But the point that gets me is where it escalated. And it didn't have to escalate to this great of a degree. Someone could have been harmed. They had Nicole especially and JP. It sounded like from this police report, Nicole was the ringleader. She had such a lack of respect for authority. Nicole wouldn't even open the door for the police officers. And that's what's scary to the point where the police officer ended up drawing his weapon. Firstly, the officer ended up drawing his baton. None of this had to go down this way. Nicole Kessinger was probably a frightened 19-year-old. There obviously was the presence, according to this police report, of marijuana, alcohol, and he even mentions drugs, but he doesn't specify which ones. His suspicions in this police report, if Nicole had those in her possession, if it was her apartment, and if she was really afraid of providing such substances to underage parties at the party, I can see why she might have freaked out. But when a police officer comes to your door and demands that you open the door because of a noise complaint, most of us would do what we likely have done as teenagers and say, yes, officer, I'm sorry, turn down the music and comply with the law. However, I'm not sure what state of mind she was in. It sounds like an impaired state of mind. It says right here, a female later identified as Nicole Kessinger was telling JP not to open the door. The police report says at one point JP looked as if he was going to come outside, but then Kessinger grabbed his arm and told him not to open the door. The officer gave JP several more lawful orders to open the door, but he refused to comply. At that point, that's when the officer made the decision to literally bust the glass door. Because this officer was concerned for the safety of other females inside the apartment, the underage drinking, and what he believed to be, quote, drug use, and unknown about how many people were in the apartment and what their ages might be. It's important to look at a person's history, of course, not for them to be condemned by it, but to understand them. By looking at this older police report, which Kessinger got out of, she made it through these charges and I believe there was some type of treatment plan ordered and what have you, but it shows a pattern. I'm not sure where her lack of respect for police came from as a 19-year-old, but it's pretty ballsy to me to disobey a police officer so many times that he's forced to pull out his baton and break a glass window and also at the point where he drew his weapon when an officer has to draw their weapon after giving so many orders to comply it's a scary situation it amps up the danger everyone else was able to escape jail that night except for nicole kessinger and jp the guy she kept encouraging to not comply with officers again the police officer wrote as soon as i busted the glass there was a strong odor of marijuana that came through the door when the glass busted the party started running towards the back of the apartment i immediately drew my weapon and ordered everyone outside and that's when jp and kessinger were immediately searched and placed into custody and all the other parties were brought out well, this whole scenario, you can just imagine all these other kids saying, open the door, open the door, open the, open the door. And then this JP kid smiling and eventually thinking about complying, but Nicole continuing to urge him not to comply to the point where he has to break down the glass door. People inside start running and the officer draws his weapon. That's a dangerous place to be.
imagine how many cases we've seen where people who are running away from police who have their weapons drawn, they get shot in the melee. Thankfully, it sounds like no one got hurt, but a simple stepping outside or opening the door could have prevented this. A lot of this danger, in my opinion. So my point is, if this is how Nicole Kessinger reacted to police when she was 19. And maybe this is some of the stuff that Chris Watts alluded to when he said, you know, she's been through a lot in her life. And I know she had allegedly been through an abusive relationship. I know there was a lot we don't know, but it makes me wonder just 11 years later in 2018, what was Nicole's attitude then towards police and whether or not she had to be truthful with them or whether or not she had to comply with them. So when she's 19, she goes through this situation with police that she amped up and by the grace of God, no one seemingly got harmed. She went to jail, JP went to jail and they got out and apparently moved forward with her life until she met Chris Watts, got involved in an illicit relationship with him. I believe Nicole knew he was married and yeah, Chris Watts probably did give her a song and dance about him going to get divorced and all of that. And maybe Nicole Kessinger had no idea of Chris Watts's plans. So I'm not saying anything to that effect. Like she said, his cheese was sliding off his cracker way before he met me. But looking at this police report, it makes me wonder Nicole's attitude towards cops and whether or not Kessinger thought she could play police like a fiddle. By 2018, I wonder if Nicole had grown even more defiant of police. Once again, she found herself in a situation perhaps of her own making and didn't want to comply. In this old police report, we see what a bad influence she was on the JP guy. Even when JP wanted to do the right thing and step outside and speak with police officers, Kessinger encouraged him not to, to the point of grabbing his arm and telling him not to open the door. What did she think? Did Kessinger just think the police would just go away and say, okay, well, you guys won't open the door, but we got this noise complaint and I see, you know, there's underage drinking and partying going on. Okay, I'm gonna, we can talk about this on our own. I want you to the video. I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to move forward to where the next um, arrest record is. Plunder is awesome. Everybody, if you are not subscribed to Plunder, Gotta go do it now. She is amazing. All right, second offense. Here we go. Character Hope. And we know Hope does not disappoint. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Plunder. Subscribe to Plunder. We love Plunder. Let's talk about the time Nicole Kessinger was arrested, and it was listed as her second offense. Previously, we took a look at the arrest record of Chris Watts' mistress, Nicole Kessinger, in the video titled Arrests, Nicole Kessinger's Three Old Charges, Chris Watts' 5 foot 1 inch 108 pound X, Obstruct Police Disobedience was one of the charges. I've linked to that video below in case you want to watch that to get more details. Back then, it was Nicole's call to the North Glen Police Department days before Watts' crime that led me to dig into her arrest records. That's when I found the different names used. It was through the CBI, and you can see the spelling of her names. White female, 5 feet, 1 inches tall, 108 pounds back then. Eyes brown, hair brown. And I was focused on North Glen at that point, but I got some help. I could see clearly here that it was actually the Aurora Police Department Agency that provided this record when Nicole was only 18. It was less than one month prior to her 19th birthday when Nicole was arrested on June 8, 2007 with three charges including obstruction. However, I just learned that that was not her first run-in with the law. The listings of obstruct police disobedience, obstruct police they were all misdemeanors. Thankfully, this helpful police record supervisor at the North Glen Police Department told me that he did not see a report for Kessinger in North Glen, but he did see a case out of Aurora, and that was the June 8th, 2007 arrest with those three charges I just showed you that I've dug more into, and I'm still awaiting 
those details, but thanks to LexisNexis, I found a prior arrest. And this is out of Arapahoe County. So the city of Aurora in Colorado is located in Arapahoe. It's a home rule municipality located in Arapahoe, Adams, and Douglas counties, Colorado. Aurora lies immediately to the east of Denver. Beyond that June 8, 2007 arrest, I just turned up records for a December 9, 2006 arrest record. It's funny how they come in dribs and drabs, but these are all public records that anyone can access. It turns out on December 9, 2006, Nicole was arrested for being a minor in possession or consumption of alcohol. Indeed, Nikki would have only been 18 years of age again at that point. You can see there the people of the state of Colorado versus Cassinger Nicole Lee. You can see the case number. The date filed was December 13th, 2006. They have the judge's information. The agency this time is the Centennial Police Department out of Colorado. And the litigant is Cassinger Nicole Lee. And it is her, white female, and her aliases listed are just the normal spelling of her name prior to her alleged name change. Under Colorado law, a minor in possession or consumption of alcohol is a Colorado revised statutes, which is punishable by a fine up to $250 for a first conviction, $500 for a second conviction, and jailable class two misdemeanor for third and subsequent convictions. So you see here, it's weird that it's listed as her second offense. I'm wondering where's the first offense? We can see her charges. One count on December 9th, 2006. Her main charge is alcohol, underage, possession or consumption, second offense. Unclassified offense, her blood alcohol content was zero. So that was December 9th, 2006. It looks like she pled guilty on February 6, 2007. The case was closed by April 4, 2007. It has another count there, count one again, which is just really a repeat the status lesser included. Again, blood alcohol content of zero. So I'm not sure how she got caught up with alcohol or in this instance, but apparently she was underage. It's pretty interesting to me that her, during her arraignment, they did reach a status disposition reach, which means they kind of reached an agreement. And by the time her status hearing was held on April 4th, 2007, everything was kind of wrapped up neatly in a bow because there was an alcohol evaluation ordered for Nikki. So by the time September 6, 2007 rolled around, that hearing, that review hearing was vacated. They must not have needed it, apparently. Nikki was able to pay $121 and just kind of put this behind her. We can see there the summons and complaint was filed December 13, 2006. We can also see by February 6, 2007, the alcohol evaluation was ordered, and by April 4th, 2007, the case was closed. Again, a status disposition means that the judge reached a decision, and a substance abuse evaluation helps to measure a person's level of addiction. I think it's pretty interesting that we don't see a first offense here. This whole thing has me wondering why... Nikki was going through such a hard time at such a young age. What was troubling Nikki at such a young age? You know, her parents were divorced when Nikki and her sister were Bella and Cece Watts' ages, as Kessinger told Kevin Kobach. I know that divorce can have a big impact upon a person. Also, I've been thinking about Zav Girl and her impromptu interview with a woman who noticed Nikki's flirty ways with married men at a Colorado gym. Now, Nikki eschewed flirting with the hot single guy, 
according to the woman. I'll link to it below. It's a good interview. Kessinger is an interesting study in what could go wrong in a person's life or their way of thinking when attempting to perhaps right the wrongs of their past. Again, no judgment. I mean, this could be any one of us, but for the grace of God, I keep saying I've never been arrested. You know, it could be any one of us. But with all this hubbub about whether Kessinger is actually being investigated or will be arrested again in the future, it's fascinating to look at her past. And the question still remain, has Chris Watts rolled on Nikki? Will she ever write a book? I hope so. It would help her really exercise her demons of the past. To me, it would be cathartic. Obviously, something was troubling her. Psalm 14.1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does. Okay, so that's what we know at this point about Nicole Kessinger's past. And everybody, again, Plunder is absolutely amazing. If you're not subscribed to her, you definitely should be. I know that you would love her content, so definitely go check her out. Paula, she's a bomb. Thank you so much for everything you do. So that's essentially what we know at this point about Nicole Kessinger's arrests. So it does leave the question, what was that other arrest that was alluded to and saying, you know, that that one arrest record that it alluded to the fact that this was her second offense, what was her first offense? So now as the story goes, and I don't know, I, I just don't remember. I was reading your comments and stuff. I don't know if Plunder, if Paula said this in the in the Plunder video, that she believes it was way back when she first was able to pull that very first arrest record. She was the first person of any YouTuber, at least, who got any of those real records on Nicole Kessinger that somebody had put in the comment section something to the effect of, you know, she had stabbed somebody in the back. And so the story goes that somebody walked in on Kessinger and a gentleman in a compromising position. And it ended up with Kessinger stabbing a female, a woman in the back. And now I don't know if that is true or not. I have been seeing people comment of something of that sort on my videos and talking about it in live chats for so long now. Does anyone know anything about that? Hey, Ontario to Ryan, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Let's see. Ontario to Ryan says, I think NK might resent either her mom or stepmom or sister. And in killing SW and CC and B, she eliminated rivals. Ooh, and won the guy this time, whereas before she never felt important. Wow, that's a really good like psychological analysis there. Yeah. Really interesting. So what do you think it's all, what do you think her deal is about here? I'm going to put the link to come up on panel. If anyone wants to come up and give us your opinion on anything, you are more than welcome to come up. I'll have panel open for a little bit. If you guys want to come up, come on up. You guys are always so shy. Come on up. You can say what you want to say. It's all good. We're friendly here. <laughs> it's all good. Come on up. Come on. <laughs> um, you know, so nobody knows about that possible third offense, you know, as I just mentioned where people tend to believe that she actually had stabbed someone in the back. I mean, that's like a really big deal. I mean, would that be the kind of offense that if she were underage, it seems she would have to be because these other two incidents were when she was underage. So if there was a first offense that preceded, there goes my gamer son screaming his head off, that preceded those two incidents, it would mean that she was also underage at that time. So if she did something like that, would that be something that would be sealed indefinitely? I, I don't know the answer. Let's see. Um, Media, the creative agency says NK daddy issues and is bipolar. She has known substance abuse. And the reason is she's living a clean lifestyle. And that's the reason why she lives a clean lifestyle and exercises so much. Very, very possibly exactly like you said there, Media. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I understand Lulu can't, um, you can't sign up as a member. That stinks. I wish I could just do it for you. I, I can't or I would. Like even when I gift memberships, I'm not because I've always wanted to be able to just give all like the moderators memberships, obviously, but YouTube doesn't have any like function where you can do that. I've been trying to think of ways to do it, but I haven't figured it out yet. <clears throat> Colleen Casey says, yeah, um, that was it. I think that was true.
Um, sorry, that was just a kind of nuisance. Sorry, um, my text. Let me turn that off. All right. <laughs> um, Ashley Victoria. And now what we're talking about here, guys, is just speculation. We don't have records of any of this. So I just do need to say that we're just talking. Ashley <laughs> so right now. says, I heard, um, I heard she did. It was a 40 year old woman who was their neighbor. I guess it was that she stabbed her in the back is a guy was married man. And that's what Ashley Victoria has heard. Hmm. Plunder is amazing at sourcing new information on so many cases. Yeah, I mean, she covers so many cases. I mean, I really admire what she does. I don't know how she does it. She's great. She turns things around quickly. She finds out new information. She's just like the bomb. She really is. Um, there, try that out, Lou. I'm so sorry. You know what? Hey, hold it. I think I can just one second. Nobody's coming up on panel. You guys link to panel. Come on, guys, get brave, get brave. I want to go get um, Lou a link. I might be able to help you out, Lou. Lou, Lou, I wish I could just get it for you here. Just one second here. Let me go. Um, let me just go to my behind the scenes. I'd have a link somewhere back here I can grab. We'll see if that works, okay? I just remembered that or would have done it a while ago. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and try this link, Lou. So here's a link to membership. Oh, good. Chris is right there behind, behind backstage. So right there, you can try that there. Um, that's like the link that they give me to give to people. I always forget that I have that. Okay. So, hey, Chris, how are you doing? So what are you thinking, my friend? I, first of all, I cannot believe I'm, I'm doing this. I have watched you for years. Oh, like thanks. You. I have a PhD in human behavior and this case has. <laughs> have we talked about that before? Me. Like a little bit. I emailed you. Um, yes. Okay. Oh, it's so good to talk to you. I'm a behavioral therapist and Lou, or, I'm sorry, Chris has a PhD in human behavior. That's so awesome. Yes. And <laughs> so this, uh, this case tests every part of my uh education and sanity um okay. and i have gotten everybody around me obsessed with it as well <laughs> i wish i could do the same i try <laughs> you gotta lure them in with the netflix documentary and yeah, like, wait, wait, you know, there's more <laughs> there's more i know that is a good luring point you're right yes you're right <laughs> so what are your thoughts uh my thoughts uh, oh i i thought i had thoughts about nk um <laughs> Until, until I think I messaged you about a doctor who completely blew up my thoughts, but just a total disrespect for authority. I think mm -hmm. complete uh, competition. I don't even know if she ever wanted Chris in that way. Right. Uh, I, I think she wanted to win. Mm -hmm. um, as it relates to Dirty South, I actually went to college in North Carolina and... Oh won't speak for dirty south specifically okay. however a lot of those shops are money laundering fronts um that yeah i've heard customers. that yeah there it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a laundering usually for for drug money for under table money so um you know i'm not surprised if if there was access to cash because you know people who use those services typically don't have to go through a financing so, service. You know, and we do have that story about, you know, and I'm not, and I don't know, we're again, guys, we're just talking here, but we have that story about, I think that Frankie, Shanann's brother even says that when she went to go purchase that home, she brought forth like a suitcase full of, mm -hmm. like, I think he, he did a of, of just bills, of stacks of bills. I mean, who does he that? Did. Right. Mm -hmm. People who <laughs> have access to right. <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars of cash. And right. usually it's not an hourly worker. Right, right, exactly. Right. Even a manager. Right, exactly. Yep. Very good point. Very good point. Yeah. I, yeah, it's crazy. Somebody, so, so studying human behavior, somebody just put out the idea because there was a question that said, 
how do, Serena Williams asked, how do we know that NK is really bipolar? I wouldn't necessarily cross, trust Chris Watts' judgment on that. And I wouldn't trust his judgment on anything. But then somebody else put up oppositional defiant disorder. Do you have any sense of what kind of, obviously NK is some kind of disorder. If you were to give a professional opinion, what would you think her disorder might, path might be? Oh my God, I, 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 could, I, I see borderline. Uh, me too. Disorder. That's what I always say too. Borderline. That flip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I. That's it. That's what I strongly feel. And again, I, neither of us are saying that we have ever assessed her or anything no. like that. But that's my sense too. Yep. Uh, that yeah. that that's. I, I, and I can also see uh, anti uh, APD antisocial personality disorder. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I know. I think that's pretty good. I think those are some pretty good assessments. So what else? I'm so glad you're up here. What else do you got? What else do you got brewing there? What else are you thinking about? <laughs> oh, I can't even tell you all the things I'm thinking about. Um, <laughs> there's, there's one that's so like, I, like I said, I can't, I can't like it. I, a doctor who I work with said it and I can't unsee it. I emailed it to you and I won't put it out there. Okay. It's, it's, oh, it's a I'll lightning have... rod. Okay. Um, oh man. I'll have to check. Okay. Yeah, you have to check your email because. Yeah, and if I didn't get your email, I'm so sorry. I sometimes. It's okay. And, it's okay. I have, uh, so many, I have to figure out how to filter. I get so many, like my channel email has become one of those emails where you also yeah. get the garbage email dump. You know, when you have an email account for too long, I, and I, I just so, don't know how to fix it all. Yeah, I I it, it's it's so crazy when you don't have people in your life who are hooked on it. As soon as he said it, I was like, I have nobody to tell. Uh, Let me email Kelly. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. There. I mean, there clearly is something wrong with the girl. I don't know. what it, What's your take on Shanann? Bless her heart. I know. I think, I think Kelly, you said it so wisely. Um, I got married at 34 it's 10 years later, I'm divorced, I would make very different decisions, right? A decade later. And I think right. had she just gotten to live and grow and learn. Yes, that is so that I, I have a ton of empathy for her. And I think there it's was, always important for us to remember that if yeah. she was allowed to live out her God given life, she would have yeah. learned to become all the wiser just like the rest of us have the opportunity to do, thankfully, you Thank know, God, I'm not who yeah. I was at 34. Right. <laughs> you know, I, like I said, I would make very different decisions. Yeah. I, I think Shanann Watts was profoundly lonely. And I mm -hmm. found a YouTube channel today that I never saw that I put on and it, it has all of her old YouTube videos that are taken down. Mm. It's an archive of them, and you can watch them in just chronological mm. order. Oh, will you send me that link, please? I please, will. Please it's anything. it's heartbreaking because Aww. what you see is somebody who, I think, was desperate for community. She was yeah, desperate for friends, and I don't think she cared if it was an MLM. I think her attraction to mm. Thrive and Lupus Page and the fibromyalgia page and the familial Mediterranean fever page. It was really all about her being just deeply and profoundly lonely. And I think um, you hit the nail on the head with that. I really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just, that just no, resonates no. so at true. Like that just seems like truth to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, you know, I think when you're young, you think these certain things will complete you. The first marriage didn't work. Well, no, no, then I'll have kids and well, then I'll be mm -hmm. successful. Well, then I'll build a house. And you try all of these things to fill that void and that hole. And I think she spent the entirety of her life trying to know. fill a void that could not be filled by people by money, by status. You really needed to go anything. through some good therapy and doing some deep digging, don't you think? Yeah. I, that's yep. what I always think about her. I just wish that she had the opportunity in her life to, you know, like face those demons she had so she could free herself of them yep. and really enjoy yep. the life that she had that was way too short. Yeah, yeah. And anytime I see her, I want to, you know, I know people want to be like, oh, she was this kind of mother. I just want to counsel her. Yeah, I yeah. really do. Every time I see her, I'm like, I wish. I wish yeah. because, she, like I said, to me, she, you know, 
maybe there were some underlying disorders, but at the surface, she was deeply and profoundly lonely and alone in this world. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. What do you guys think about that in chat? And Sherry, come back up. I think it was just Sherry that was backstage. I was just about to pop you up, but you can come on back up if you want to. I don't know if we lost you or if you decided to come down, but yeah, no, I think that's really true too. And it's like, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, I mean, I do, you know, truth be told, I think that <clears throat> most people who've watched this channel know, whoops, and there goes Chris, what's going on? I'm losing all my friends. <laughs> oh, darn it. Let me put the link back up. Um, but I'll finish what I was saying, I guess. Um, you know, I, I do have some personally, you know, I feel like I want to speak for her and I want to speak for the kids and I want to speak for them all together. But, and I feel there's a point where Speaking for Shanann and speaking for the kids needs to be done separately. And I'll, I'm going to bring Chris back up. Good. I'm glad you came back up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I do when it's, you know, kind of speaking for the kids. And I do think it's important. I do see some dynamics in that mother-child relationship that are troubling to me. But mm -hmm. I, I, it's always such a hard thing for me to talk about that or to to shed a light on that without it coming across. Because some people are, are, you know, just determined that it's Shanann bashing no matter what, you know. But, um, you know, I, I do see some troubling things in that mother child relationship, but I also see some troubling things that make me just want to hug her. And like you said, like mm -hmm. provide her the proper therapy that she deserved. And, and with all of this case, with, with all of the attention this case has gotten, I think the best thing that can come out of it is that we all do something differently. Certainly me as a mom, yeah. I put my phone down and it is yeah. a direct result of this case is yeah. knowing when to Me plug too. in. So I think the best thing we can do is to learn, but there were certainly some, um, some troubling dynamics, but I, I remember the interview with her teacher from high school mm -hmm. where she wrote him the beautiful note and said that he was like a father figure to her yeah. and she felt yeah. so close to him. And he was, yeah. I thought it was interesting. I think she said, you've been more of a father to me than my father, which I thought was a very um, yeah. hot statement. And when she came to stay for the six weeks in North Carolina, her dad said, if you can tolerate your mom for that long. So I think in those comments, we learn a lot about the way she was parented. And I know her parents yeah. took her from doctor to doctor because of her headaches and all of those things. Yeah. So maybe as a child, she learned the way to get attention is to, to be hurt. And um, yeah. that's the way to get nurturing. But there were certainly very, some so many troubling aspects to her her parenting, especially. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even say especially with Bella. I think Bella felt it uniquely, but I think it was with both of them. I think so too, in different ways, which is kind mm -hmm. of interesting. Very mm -hmm. di very different children, in different ways. We also have um Sherry here, so I just want to say hi to Sherry. Sherry, what's on your mind, my friend? Oh no, I can't hear you, Sherry. Sometimes it's so hard bringing people up. I just want to be like, fix the audio, you know, because I don't even know what the problem is because it's not my strong shoot. Sherry, can you hear us? Well, you know, what? I'm going to let Sherry try to fix her audio there. But I want to just while you were talking about that interview with her um, teacher there, I'm just going to play a little bit of that because I think it's really mm -hmm. interesting. I'm glad that you hit on it. It's funny because mm -hmm. I was thinking of playing a little bit of this earlier. So I'm glad you just mentioned that because it fits right in. So let's see here. Oh. See if I can. Oh, I didn't realize it was going to be Facebook. Let me see if I can actually play it. I'm not sure if I can turn. I my Facebook has been locked up, so let me find it and then through another means here. <clears throat> Sherry, and if you're there, just shout out. I'll try to pick you up, honey. Okay. All right. Um, this is weird, but okay. So this is CDT. It's like a, all right. So okay. So this is from CDT. CDT no longer has an active um uh youtube channel for summer i can't remember what happened with her but she's wonderful and she's on um tiktok so guys try to go find her on tiktok and this is from cdt channel okay oh gotta press play again okay <laughs> here we go happy birthday to you Hey, 
thank you for being with us. And first and foremost, I'm very sorry for your loss. You weren't just her, her ninth grade teacher. You became a very close friend of hers. You continued a friendship with her right up until, as I understand it, I think two weeks before she died, you last communicated with her, right? Yes, that's correct. Yep, I found out, um, yeah, I found out kind of late too, but yeah, we, um, she was doing a convention over there and I was just so impressed with uh, her doing Facebook Live and the way she did it and the way she does, had become such an encourager. Um, I just gave her a, a big, how much I'm proud of her on the Facebook Live message. And she wasn't um, like that. When, when, you, um, when you were her teacher at 14 years old, you described a very different person. Who was she then? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, you'd be amazed at how far she's come. She's a, she's a wonderful, beautiful human being who uh, learned that the power of giving your life away, I think, uh, brings true joy. Uh, she was a very insecure young lady who didn't have a lot of friends when I met her at 14 years old. Um, but she was brave enough to sign up for beginning acting. And I think that's where... Uh, she made a big mistake. <laughs> well, tell me first. about that. Well, well, we had um, a lot of kids took theater in ninth grade. So we had about 35 to 40 kids in her class. Um, they did that to me twice at Pinecrest. And I didn't mind at all because I had a, a great mom um, working with that many kids. Um, um, kids in her class. Um, I made sure people understood I wasn't the most Just one second. Person I muted you. Um, you the ensemble is the one most second. important this is done, thing. And I'll bring looking you back at up. other people um, as bigger than yourself is how you can succeed in theater, no matter whether it's on tech crew or it's on um, in the acting side. So I'm even to this day, um, when I teach film acting, it's, it's all about the ensemble. People actually have to sign a contract. So when she came in, she realized um, she was with a group of people that were much more outgoing than she was at the time. But she also realized that um, they cared about her and were just as interested in her succeeding. Um, so she, I think she started to really thrive and started to even give her life away and started to, uh, I'm very improvisational based. So she even started contributing in the improvs. And um, it's fine. It, you know, it it's, it's the person yeah. you're describing, it's, it's so different than the, than the person who we see on Facebook. I mean, she just seemed so confident. And yet you say, she spent a lot of time in your office looking for advice. She was teased a lot. She had a low self-image. Um, yes, did, her, did you, her self esteem was low. She did not have a good self-image of herself at 14 years old. And I want to make it very clear: like I don't take, I don't take any credit for it at all. All I did, all I did was really heard Shanna Ann, and I joked with her all the time. Her name was, you know, Shanna Ann. <laughs> because it was a very yeah, you know what? Tell, tell us that because, yeah, because all I did was have really made, have made um, sort of a lot of, sort of a lot of, I, I guess, I guess series, a series of pronunciation of her name. I, I've heard her pronounce her own name on her Facebook video. <laughs> Sherry, I just was moved. Wait, let's see if we can get Sherry in with a good feed here. So, Sherry, listen, if you got um, this live stream playing on your TV or your phone or your computer or whatever, you're going to have to mute that. Um, so we don't get feedback. So we, I'm going to try to unmute you and see if we can hear. Oh, she, she just dropped down. I'm sorry, Sherry. I'm sorry if, yeah, I didn't mean to have you go down, but yeah, it was just echoing. So if anybody comes up onto it and then I lost Chris too, by the way, it says device is not connected. So I don't know what happened there. I'm losing all my people. Um, if you come up on a live stream, if you got the stream playing in the background, you have to mute that or else it will like echo, 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 you know, I don't, I wish I could just fix it, make it easier for everyone, but I'm going to keep playing this. Um, but she, you know, in her, um, at her memorial, the program at the church spelled her name with the proper spelling, S-H-A-N apostrophe A-N-N. -N. And, and how did she pronounce it um, when she was at school? Well, here's what I'll say, because, um, Ever since I knew her, it was always Shanna Ann, like, and I'd break it up into two syllables and two separate things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's how I've always known it and joked with her. And she never corrected me in three years of being with me. Um, so but I don't want to I mean, she could have changed the way she wanted it pronounced later sure. in life. So I certainly don't want to ask on that. you this, yeah. Matt, the, the, the reason we found out about you um, at all was because you found something after you attended her funeral. Um, you were moving, and when we move, we find all sorts of stuff from our past, you know, tucked away in nooks and crannies in our homes, and you found a letter that, that Shanann had written to you fairly recently. Um, and I just want, if I can, I just want to, actually, when I say fairly recently, I think it was as you were leaving Pinecrest in 2002. So I want to read for our viewers what the letter said, and I think we even have a picture of um, what the, the card and the note and the signature uh, looks like. You, you had posted it on Facebook. Let's pop that up on the air. 
and I'm going to read some of the things that she wrote to you. I just wanted you to know that I am going to miss you dearly. You are truly something special to me. You have always been there for me and have been very helpful. You helped bring out the true person in me back in ninth grade, and I can't thank you enough for that. Not only have you been there for me as a friend, but you have also been like a father figure to me. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for being a wonderful teacher and friend. I will never forget you. Love always. When, when you found that, Matt, what, what happened? What happened? What, what did you think? Well, there's, there's a lot to it. I mean, uh, the Shanna Ann that we just described in ninth grade and the Shanna Ann that she became before I left, she became a rock for me. Um, she learned that giving her life away meant so much more and she became like a stage manager and a production person. Um, Adam Goodrum was our tech director and she was always there to help with the tech crew, but she'd also work amazingly with the actor. She just learned, um, she learned, she had a level of empathy like a lot of people today just don't. So to, to find out that this happened to her, I mean, I'm still, I still don't believe it's true. It's so mind-boggling because she's really truly one of the good ones one of the amazing ones who really saw hurting people out there um so when i found that i i thought it was such a gift because i had just come back from the funeral and they they had the three caskets there and it was so hard um to see someone that, that was just that amazing that someone could do that and, and on top of it as a father and a husband Someone who would betray that trust um, to protect those little babies and that and that wife, and to see it happen to her of all people. Uh, so there was two layers to it. But one was the funeral, which was very hard. Um, then coming home and just clean out the garage. Honestly, I was not looking for it. Um, I just found this thing, and it was all these this huge card from my one of my classes, and then there was this little card from Shanna Ann, um, and it was one of the first things that I opened and read. I just. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was such a treasure. And uh, it just reminded me of how far she'd come. And my hope is, honestly, I love what the family's doing and I wanna make sure we highlight that. Um, shine like Shanna Ann, hashtag shine like Shanna Ann because that woman in her light and legacy, she did enough in her short amount of time to affect people's lives for a long time to come, I think. Um, and that's what it reminded me of. And that's why I posted it. Yeah, so, you know, there's a perspective, and I lost Chris and Cherry again. Oh, you guys. Oh, hey, Aunt Diane. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Um, You know, and then, oh, there's Chris. Chris is back. Okay, good. Hey, Chris. So, you know, I see some Thanks. people in chat, so just be respectful to each other. You know, when people do watch her videos, they see different things, and, like, and, and that's okay. I mean, that's okay. Like, what we see, you know, when we watch her videos is very much going to be informed by what our own experiences are in yeah. life and things like that. So, it's okay that people see different things. Yeah, and I, I, this is new to me, so I can't see the chat and uh -huh. see the, uh, but I did see someone say she, I'm not saying she was only lonely. I think that there were right. some other things going on, but I think at the root of, uh, we are not made to be alone. I and and, right. and just from my mental health, isolation can lead to an array Absolutely. of mental issues we are not made to to, to live life alone and a lot of us know that alone. just going through covid covid right yep. you know, I mean, yep. we have like to some degree i think most people have that experience to some degree right yep. yeah and so whether i've heard she has munchausen by proxy that's also an attention seeking yeah i don't want to be alone in the in this disorder people yeah. have heard you know she was definitely very domineering well that's somebody who didn't have control of their surroundings growing up and so that's not uncommon if you lived in a house where there was chaos for you to demand that things be orderly even the she called herself ocd those are all disorders that are born of not having control of your environment growing up so right um, mm -hmm. yeah yeah, no, I, t I totally, I mean, I think you're right on with this. Someone just told me my title is misspelled. Oh, thank you. It is misspelled. I'll change it. Thank you for letting me know that, Loveland. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, I think you're, you know, I think you're so spot on with your analysis there. And I, you know, I just love how the way that you're, you know, saying all of this, because, 
it's a point that I try to make time and time again. And I, I, you know, I guess I don't think I make it, you know, well enough as well as, is I don't, I don't make the point that I'm trying to make all the time is that I do think it's important to, for those of us who see, and again, it's not saying everyone needs to see this by any means, but to see things that are troubling in that parental relationship with her children, it's not to say that she's a horrible person. My God, by absolutely no means is that to say that she is, deserving of what happened to her. My God. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely not. She deserved to live out her life. And it's such a horrible, horrible tragedy that she didn't have that chance. But, you know, there were things going on. And, you know, like Chris was saying, like, you know, I am more aware of my screen time is, you know, compared to the time I spend with my kids as a direct result of this case. And I am too. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And I think it is important that we talk about these human behavioral issues that we see and what we can observe in one another, because only then can we see it in ourselves sometimes. And and I will quickly tell a deeply personal story that I've I've never shared with um with my divorce. We my ex husband and I had a very similar dynamic. The difference was I was primarily the money maker, and I saw him sort of detaching. And it was during COVID. I used to travel a lot, and when you're stuck in the house with somebody, you see things that maybe you didn't see before. Mm -hmm. And I, within two weeks of COVID, I realized he's cheating. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I quit when, when somebody opts out, you, you know, I remember speaking in and, and getting advice and some people were like, get a fight for your marriage. My mom told me, get the hell out. Like if he's checked out, you get out because it's, yeah. It's it's dangerous, and I'll I will never forget. He never raised a hand for to me. He was never violent. He was never anything. And the day I found out he was cheating on Wednesday, I told him he had to Friday to get out. He was getting his stuff out that weekend, and he lunged at me with his hands to my oh like, my like towards my throat. <gasps> and I oh looked God. at him because he knew my family would end him, and so yeah. he. But it was I'd never seen that rage in his. He was always just. He was very passive, but in seeing that, this was two years after that. But that's, I think that's why this case sticks with me so much. Well, thank God you got out of that relationship. God, we are so grateful for so that. So much I mean, of our God. dynamic was so similar, but right. I mean, he never saw one ounce of it until the very end. And it was when he was moving his stuff out. And like I said, he just lunged. And I looked at him because I'm like, you know, my dad will be here in six minutes, my mom in eight, and the rest of my cousins in 15. And where are you going to go? Like, right. it, you know, so oh, luckily I had that support system. I'm but so glad you had that support. My gosh. That's why I think this story is so deeply personal to me because you would, I, I think it maybe it could have been me. Maybe it could have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really, I mean, my God, I'm sure not in a million billion years did Shanann think it could have been her, you know? I mean, you know, you just never know. Human beings are very peculiar, very peculiar. <laughs> oh, man. Well, God, I am so grateful that you are safe and that you got out of that relationship. And I mean, are you, in retrospect, are you just so thankful that your life has changed in the ways that you cause it to change by leaving that relationship? Absolutely. But yeah. you, I got married at the age where Shanann passed away. I got married at 34. Yeah. I had my first kid at 36. So mm -hmm. I was a little bit older and um, it, it, I was very established financially. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it just makes a really it's big difference. difference. I remember yeah. in her text to, I think it was Cassie and Nicole saying like, how am I going to do it with, I can't make it with two children, let alone three. And that just wasn't my yes. dynamic. Um, yes. it's so all these things that you're talking about, I was just listening to these little sound clips today and I was thinking about playing them tonight. That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think she did say some things to her friends that was letting us know, like, you know, she, you know, Shanann presented herself in a way where she wanted people to think that she was like super strong, go get her. And, you know, but, but I mean, I think some of the things she said to her friends, let us know that she was terrified of leaving Chris, that she didn't think that she was going to be able to make it on her own. I mean, she said that, you know? Yeah. yeah. She, she was, she, whatever facade she put on for social media, to me, her texts were, were full of truth and, and fear yeah. Um, yeah. about being able to do it. And fortunately for me, that wasn't my circumstance, but I think we have to, 
have the same compassion we would have for any woman who's in a situation Absolutely. where whether they created it or not, that financially they're just right. not able to make it on their own. And I, and I think we see that with a, with a lot of women and certainly in my line of work. And I work with mm. a lot of women who are victims of domestic violence. And I don't believe that Shanae was a victim of domestic violence. Let me be clear. No, but I, I see it that. all the time where women don't have, feel like they don't have choices. So they've got to make yeah. it work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to take this like question somebody asked, and I know that this is going to be a little controversial, but um, I'm just going to answer this question since you asked it. So Catherine Elizabeth asked, genuinely asking, are you implying that she didn't have lupus or that her daughter's allergies weren't real? You mentioned Munchausen's. Well, I can just tell you this. A lot of you who watch this channel know that I do have lupus, and a lot of you who have been with this channel for a while know that there are times where you know, I'll just kind of won't be doing anything because I will have lupus flare-ups like ever. I didn't know anybody other than my grandmother who had lupus when I was diagnosed. It would have been, I think like five years this past month, five years ago, and my life completely changed. And now I know a lot of people that do have lupus and every single person I know that has lupus will have these, whatever the period of time it is, you know, they'll mm -hmm. have flare-ups that, that really render you almost like incapable of living your life, like everything, mm -hmm. but, you know? And um, did I did, did I personally see that in Shanann? I personally did not. Am I qualified or do I have enough knowledge or did I know her personally where I can, you know, make that, you know, you know, like determination? Absolutely not. But did I see in her what I see in other people that I know so many of now that have lupus? No, I personally did it. And as far as her daughter's allergies being real or not, you know, I did make a couple of videos about that and they are controversial videos, but I mean, I think in the throughout and I can put link them, I can provide links for them if you want them. I think I was basically able to prove that her daughters did not have nut allergies. I absolutely do not believe that they had like, you know, anaphylactic tree nut yeah. allergies. There's no way in hell. I I, and I'm just going to keep it real. I am holding Cece's favorite Thrive Pro Ball right now. Yep. Birthday, birthday. Birthday, and birthday. It, <laughs> I'm holding it right here in my hand, yep. reading it. And it doesn't say may contain. It says contain. Contain. Thank you. Soy, tree nuts, almond. It yep. doesn't say cross-contaminated. It doesn't say, right. you know, on the same line. It literally says contains milk, soy, and, and tree nuts, almonds. And so, you know, there was a matter of like a couple of those flavors of those bars. You know, they changed their factories where they but were. But not birthday, them. birthday. And it was not birthday, birthday. I did, the research <laughs> I did on this was so solid. And I, guys, I sat on it for two and a half years. I sat on it because I knew when I talked about it, it was going to create a shit storm for me. But then I finally decided I have this information. People are asking the questions. I do think that it's important in understanding the personalities here as human yeah. beings to understand all these dynamics. So I am going to talk about it. I lost subscribers. I had death threats. It was crazy. That's nuts. <laughs> but, well, I, that's yeah. nuts. Not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's no, pun intended. It's crazy. I yeah. bought all of them. I bought the Oreo cookie. I bought the lemon meringue. I bought the the honey bun. And I haven't eaten them because they're they're not very good, truth be told. But I literally just went in my bathroom and grabbed them. And all of these were purchased in 2019, late 2018, 2019. Yeah. 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 So, you know, so th those are, that's just where, I mean, just because it was asked and I see people are chatting about, that is where I stand on those issues. I don't claim that, you know, I knew Shanann, that I, you know, spent time with the family or anything like that. But just based on the research that I did and what we can see, I mean, it, I actually found just... Gosh, I was just looking through, um, you know, my Pinterest popped up and it was some like CC and Bella photos just literally yesterday. And now everybody knows that if you have a tree nut allergy, you cannot eat Burger King. You cannot eat McDonald's. It's just no. out of the question. And, you know, I did a whole video about them, you know, eating, you know, them being incentivized by McDonald's, which was all legitimate true. So I'm going to turn my camera back on here. I'm just going to show you the pictures of my phone. So here we have Cece and Bella eating a burger and fries. And that is absolutely positively on McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one here, McDonald's paper wrap right there. So there's Cece herself, the one that was supposed to supposedly so allergic to those tree nuts, eating McDonald's French fries, mm -hmm. which, you know, if she was allergic to tree nuts, that would 
put her in a bad place. <laughs> I've heard that from a lot of people that are allergic to tree nuts, that they absolutely positively cannot eat fast food. It's just out of the it, question. It, it makes eating almost any packaged food out of the question. Treat yeah. carefully. Um, yeah. It, you know, I know they loved, I love me some Bojangles too. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but that, but that clearly states, um, you know, that it's, it's cross contaminated as well. So, you know, nut gate yeah. is one of those things that I just like, if it, I look at this case and say, what one chip could have been played differently or moved on the board so that things change. And I believe that maybe Nutgate might've been I do too. one of those things that changed this outcome. I do too. And you know what? And that's ultimately why I decided that I wanted to talk about it because I believe in Chris Watts own words. And do I always believe Chris Watts? Hell no. Obviously nice. I don't. He's proven himself to be a, a dog of a human being, a liar in a million different ways. But when he talks about, you know, the pain that he felt when he felt like once again, he was being pulled away from his family and this divide was being created. And I mean, she was like, you know, to his parents, you will never see your grandchildren again. I, I think that was, I, I fully believe that was a turning point for him. I, I do as well. I do yeah. as well. And even more, I think earlier in the chat, before we started the live chat, somebody said like, when will we know the truth? I actually believe that Chris Watts only attachment in life is to his father. I don't think he gives a I agree damn with that about too. anybody yeah. else. And I think when his father passes might be the only time we ever get the real story. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. And then, okay. So red sky black is in chat and says <clears throat> they did have proven allergies. You know, I have the proof so we can stop tonight. I'm going to say red sky black sent me some screenshots of hospital records. And I can't even, I can't remember exactly what the nature of a, of it was, honestly, Red Sky Black. I'm not trying to like, you know, like dance around the issue. I just don't remember exactly what it said. But these records, if they were real, if they were accurate, would imply that one of the girls had a, some kind of allergy. And I'm so sorry that I don't remember the exact thing. I but think it was but, peanut and dogs. Yeah. Okay. That may have been it. But the question that I have then is, you know, and if those records were, I, I need to know where those records came from, how they were obtained. I mean, things that would imply whoever, you know, got those records, it would be a bad implication for that person because they are covered under HIPAA laws. And for me to even show them on this channel without knowing that information, I feel would be incredibly reckless. So I am not ignoring that information, Red Sky Black or anybody else, but I just need to know more about where that information came from before I can put that out on this channel. And if I am wrong, I will say I am wrong. Yeah. I have no problem with that, but I don't know enough about that, those records, where they came from. I mean, it's like those records would have to have been stolen against HIPAA regulations and that's a big deal. So I'm not trying to put someone out there on the limb for, you know, breaking HIPAA regulations. That's a big deal. <laughs> and the on only thing I'm referencing is the photos that Shanann posted on Facebook where she said peanuts and dogs where uh, where there was a reaction to on the back of one of the children. And I actually think it was Bella. I don't think it was Cece. It was. That's the only thing I'm going Bella. by. So, yeah. who, but who but who knows? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, so it, to, in my mind, it, yeah, you know, that's all I can, all I can tell you is, you know, like the information that I found through my research, if those records could be, you know, that were sent to me or that were are on Red Sky Black channel, if anyone wants to go see them, go over to Red Sky Black's channel, you can see them there. They are there. I need to know more about them, where they came from, how they were obtained and things like that. Once I have that information, I will happily put them on my channel. So that's, that's all I can say about that. <laughs> I think Chris denied access to those medical records. I don't, I know. I just, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I know that they were sealed indefinitely, right? Somebody mm -hmm. just mentioned that in the autopsy reports, it mentions that CC is allergic to peanuts. I don't know mm -hmm. how that could mention that in the autopsy reports, but I mean, I'm not a medical person like that. So Yeah. And Colleen Casey says, hi, Colleen, says, Kelly, I think um, you had what she spent on medical and it was muco, buco, buckos. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. It was, was 
Mila. Oh, what, what was spent on medical stuff in the Watts family, like the neck surgery and the, and the, a lot of the tests that were done weren't covered by insurance. I mean, I think it, it probably, I don't, it certainly wasn't a, I don't think it, I wouldn't say it was, and now I haven't like done the calculation. So I'm just kind of like, you know, it didn't seem like it was a bulk of their debt because a lot of that was unsecured credit card debt straight that's up. That's what I was, that's what I was getting at. The first yeah. bankruptcy seemed to be a lot yeah. of like unsecured debt and, and, yeah. and not medical debt, which is treated. A, and, and now if they filed a second bankruptcy would have tre been treated differently from regular right. medical debt. Yes. Yep. That's right. Yep. Exactly. So yeah, totally. Yeah. It was, yeah. Chris had no surgery too. That's a new one for me. I don't, what did he have? Like, a, I, I hadn't even heard that before. It was really serious money. Yes, it was Colleen and Casey. It really was. But, you know, I have, you know, I have videos on the not gay stuff. If you guys want to see it, if you want to see the stuff that Red Sky Black is talking about, you can certainly go to Red Sky Black's channel. I would certainly encourage you to do that. And as always, I say, you know, and decide for yourself. I'm not asking anybody to take my word at face value. You know, I don't want you to, but I can tell you, you know, I can, you know, provide the receipts and tell you the amount of research and effort that I put into it. And this is a result. When I go into researching these things, I'm not attached to one outcome or the other. I'm really not. It's just whatever's in front of me usually becomes obvious at some point. Mm -hmm. And then that's what I talk about, you know? So. And Kelly, I will say uh, the only reason I'm on, on your panel, even though I've followed your channel for years and years and years is your stuff is backed up because I go in and research it myself. So I, 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 I will say lot. that everything that 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 there's there's nothing that I've heard you say and I've actually heard you be I've, I've seen you tap dance around things that I would say way more directly <laughs> I do so, try to tap dance sometimes <laughs> yes yes you dance beautifully Kelly thank um, you so I <laughs> well thank you I really appreciate it that means a lot to me because I mean that's what I want you guys to be able to see is that is what, you know, if ever I am wrong on something, I will absolutely come out and say it. There's been some, I can't think of like any like huge things like this issue be, just because I haven't been provided that information where I can trace it back to where I can say, okay, well, you know, this is a case, but I have said before, okay, like I have to adjust what I said before because now there's this information and like, that's what's up. I have no problem doing that. It's not like the Kelly's right channel. It's a like, let's discuss to these human dynamics in this form of true crime, because so many of us are interested in it for the same, you know, kind of behavioral reasons that we want to observe and study one another and therefore learn about ourselves, you know? So, but thank you. No, that's really, I'm very honored that you, that you, you know, have that to say about the channel. I very much appreciate that. Yep. And like I said, I, I it's why I'm doing more research before I say anything more about NK. Yeah. Um, but I, I have a, a belief now and I'm, I'm chasing it down like a dog with a bone before I say anything. <laughs> I have to go back through. Can you send me an email like later on? So I know what email address you came from so I can look it up. I sure will. Okay. Thank you. That would be awesome. And then Aunt Diane said in, um, and I can't wait to hear about what this is. Oh my gosh. Or see, or yeah, I'm really, I'm really interested in this one. And Aunt Diane said that she has the post that, um person had posted about the stabbing or whatever so then i asked aunt diane if you wouldn't mind would you be willing to send it to me it's watts obsession gmail.com i'd like be interested in showing people that oh my gosh crazy stuff oh oh yeah that'd be great are you gonna send it to me now or later do you want i mean do you want me to show it to people now <clears throat> i think i have my email up Okay, cool. So let's see what Aunt Diane is sending us here. Always like, there's always interesting things that come out of these live streams. I will tell you when I first started this channel, I really like, you know, I wanted to learn video editing. And I was like live streaming, I don't really know if like I want to do that, or I can do it. But you guys always have so much insightful stuff to say. And I always end up learning something that's for damn sure. <laughs> So it's just Watts obsession at gmail.com. There's no the in it, Aunt Diane, just Watts obsession. So is there anything, uh, is there anything else, Chris, that we haven't like touched on that you had some thoughts on that you wanted to, to comment on this evening? Oh, 
did I lose Chris? Oh, there you go. I'm sorry. You weren't you weren't up for a minute. I don't know why. I may have accidentally. I'm not I'm sure sorry. what happened. Um, go ahead. I, no, I think uh, Shanann's history with third with Dirty South, I believe whatever was alleged that that that, that business that whole i just believe it um yeah, uh, yeah and with nk the the blatant disrespect for authority yeah oh your audio just cut out i don't know what's going on here I, heard I don't know. Can oh, you there hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, now. like I said, when I send you what I'll send, I, I, I just, um, I, I think they were both troubled women and troubled in in different ways, and maybe that's what Chris Watts was attracted to. I know. I was just gonna say that, like, really leads us to the question. I definitely like haven't totally figured this one out. Like, you know, I I do see a lot of similarities between the two of them. Mm -hmm. and if I if I had to pick size, I'd probably I probably I I pick Shanann Watts because I just think NK is just so gross. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but um you know I wonder you know what's up with that about Chris that he you know was you know really just entangled in these two very yeah. very similar women and how yeah. similar are they to his mother? You know. Ooh, I think yeah. they are identical to his mother, and I also yeah. think NK was a shapeshifter. Do I think that they would have been sand surfing? in a year no do i think no. they would have been at bandamere in a year no, no. no. but they have no. been at the fort museum in a year no she no. just knew exactly what he was missing and she tried to be that person yeah no i think so too i think she tried to be and i think you know i think she definitely was busting into shenan watts like social media, everything. Yeah. I think she figured out everything that Chris Watts did and did not like about her and why yeah. she was so fixated on getting him. I have no idea and will never understand that. I, um, yeah, but I don't, I, you know, I've <laughs> seen the explosion theories in my head. I just, my logical head can't go there, but I do no. understand wanting to win. Yes, yes. That I understand. Yeah. And so I don't know if she thought she was getting some sort of prize i i I'll, I'll never understand why she went after him but i do know that she lied and presented herself in a way like i said he would have never done those things ever again that he did with her in that month of june and july no no i don't think so either i think she made herself the it girl exactly what she thought he wanted mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. exactly who she became and yeah i yeah i just i think that's what's up for sure yeah 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 she's the ultimate shapeshifter she is a shapeshifter she is a shapeshifter oh my gosh so funny that you say that too because last week i was talking about like the 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 really scary kind of paranormal experience that i feel that i had as it relates Ooh, to this I was on that kelly oh I, you, god like i so slept with my door locked i, I, I have very a, i live in a gated community with security i was like don't let anybody in my house I no know. matter what they tell you, you i know my I life know. for one night it's, kelly i tell you it's so scary and so somebody sent me like the link to Christina, because people kept telling me that Christina Randall, who's another, who's, who's awesome. You guys probably all know Christina Randall. She's like a legend, but she had a weird experience. And so I finally watched that. And the person that sent me the link said something to the effect, like she started seeing shapeshifters was exactly what the person said, but she ended up like, she saw this sort of like shadow figure in her garage, not when she turned the lights off, but when she turned the lights on that scared her to the point where she wouldn't even touch this case for a long time. Yeah. Oh, and I can't hear you again. I, I, oh, you, oh I, 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 you know, I, I, I love Jesus and I have guns. They go together. So yes. I don't know if you can see the shapeshifter, but, uh, I definitely know how to pray. And, uh, I have an experience. It's just, a. I have family that lives very close to the grave, and I will tell you, I did visit the grave, and it is, uh, I didn't bring my phone, I didn't take pictures, it is, it is like none other. Really? How so? Oh, I can't hear you again. 
I, I threw up okay. when I left. You did. Oh, it was like that powerful. It was, wow. it was that, it was that <laughs> sickening. And it's a beautiful, beautiful. There's it's something very hallowed about that ground. Wow. It's a beautiful, it, it it's it's in the middle of nowhere. It's a stunning sight. And 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 it's it's 20 minutes from my aunt's house, is, is why I went and I went to bring bright flowers to oh, all of them but I I when I tell you I wept for them I wept for me I wept for my children I wept for you know oh. my marriage it, it but it it made me sick to my stomach Kelly oh wow wow I mean could you pinpoint what it was that was like so intense I think it's the knowledge of the case it's a very ornate um grave and mm -hmm. it's just the, it, you could tell it has a lot of visitors um I went around Christmas mm -hmm. uh, because that's when I was visiting my aunt and they had these um crosses like each there were four oh, wow. there were four oh I, I have goose I have goose, truth bumps goosebumps four crosses wow. like cr like tree crosses um it's just, it's the loss of life. It's, the, it's the, I yeah. don't know what it is, but it is, it over, like, it is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. And I never expected it. I never, and that was just last Christmas. So that was 2020, it was actually 2022 where I went. So I'm talking years removed and yeah. um, it, it was, it was intense. And, wow. and and I didn't expect it. I did. I just was going to pay my respects. And I mean, I literally, it was, it was a beau, it was an unseasonably warm day. And I sat on the ground and just wept. Oh my goodness. Wow. That sounds so intense. I just, yeah, I can't even, I truly can't imagine. Like, I don't, I, I almost feel like I would have a hard time. I, I, yeah, I, I it's, it sounds like it would be intense. It is. Yeah. You, you just feel the there's a heaviness there that is, it is not normal. And I've been to many graves. My, my family made their money in um, having a funeral home that is four generations now. Oh, wow. Dead bodies do nothing to me. Cemeteries do nothing to me. This shook me to my core. Wow. That's like a pretty profound statement. Wow. Mm. Wow. Fluffy Muppet says the reality of it. It was more than a case. Yeah, a really great statement, mm -hmm. Fluffy Muppet. Fluffy Muppet. Yeah, absolutely. That's 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 actually a brilliant statement. These are lives lost, and that's it. Yeah. Just got so real. And like I said, with the story I told earlier, I just, I just wept for who they could have been, who they never yeah. will be, for the Aww. both. For both families, for both families, you know, I, I have two children as well. And, and if my mother had to bury the three of us, she would die. Oh my God. Oh she my would God. Die. You know, she would die. You know. And that's why I just like, I can't went on this channel when people go into talking about like the grandparents and stuff. I just, Stop. can't. I can't, I just can't Stop. imagine with these poor, poor people. I can't imagine. I don't like, part of me doesn't want to imagine, you know, yeah. I mean. My mother-in-law can't stand me. And if me and my two children didn't make it, she she would die. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And she doesn't like me. Yeah. Because yeah. she sent me a text three days ago telling me she doesn't like me. And she, would, <laughs> she would still die. It's just losing your people, you know. And my gosh, it's just it's a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you for everything you've shared. It's, you've been an awesome guest. I'm so glad that you decided to come up tonight. Uh, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I thought I would never, I would never do it, but you, ha you have done this case so much justice and you've done it with, oh, thank you with class and with, um, intelligence and with tact. And I, I, I couldn't not tonight. I really appreciate I have, that so much. Yeah. I very, very much appreciate that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. She's been an awesome guest. Everybody hand it to Chris and so, oh, send me an email. Um, if you can. So I know what your email is. So I, I will read forward to the NK bomb theory that <laughs> will 
I I feel like I haven't read it because I feel like I, I I remember reading. Oh, you, you will remember, Kelly. Okay, yeah. I feel like I wouldn't remember one. it based on what you're saying. Okay. You would remember it. <laughs> well, Diane, Diane, I'm just gonna read these couple things and I'm gonna get wrapping up because um, you know, because it's been about two, it's been two and a half. It's been I've been enjoyable life for me, but I want to just read these. Um, so Aunt Diane sent me these. Okay, I have to lean in real quick, and apparently this is in. This is about the um, the NK stabbing a person theory. So this one says, um, I, I, I recognize that name, Victoria Termoff. I, um, let's see, I've asked to watch Barb and Rob's home while they were away on vacation with instructions that Nicole under no circumstances was to be inside the home while they were away. My wife and Nicole's younger sister who was staying with us went by to get some more clothing. My wife and her walked in on Nicole and a guy having oral sex on the couch in the family room. After um, doing her best to remove both to no avail, she called me. Long story short, a physical altercation occurred between the male and myself and which during that altercation, she stabbed me in the back with a kitchen knife pulled from the butcher's block. My wife interceded, getting the knife away and both fled, but both were quickly arrested after my wife called 911. Yikes, wow. And then there is another one that Aunt Diane 157 sent me. So let me get that one up here. All right, thank you so much, Aunt Diane. Thank you for sharing that. So this next one, um, let's see. Nope. All right. I'm going to make this big here too. Oh my gosh. I can barely read that. Whoa. That's like really small. So is the one. Okay. And then it says, I'm sorry to send you a random message, but did Nicole stab you? I am a part of a Facebook group that is asking the same question. The lady has posted this photo. And then someone says, yes, I've known her since 2002. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Diane. So while there is a little, you know, a little legitimacy apparently to the, the, the tale that Nicole Kessinger actually did stab someone and, you know, so, okay. So this would have been in 2002, we're saying, so let's do some math. So Nicole Kessinger was 30 and 19. Okay. In 2018, she was 30. Allegedly. Allegedly. Right. Thank you. So that means she would have been born in 88. Mm -hmm. Right. So that means in 2002, it seems that would have been after the other two arrests that plunder covered. But still, we, we don't know. Um, I wish they would have pressed charges. Yeah. Could the 911 call be found? Possibly. I'm going to have to read these a little more carefully. I'm getting a little bit tired, so I'm like not thinking. So like my thought, my thinking process is in like the best it could possibly be. But I think, did I read that right? It does say it happened in 2002, right? Mm -hmm. Did I just make that up? Which puts her at what, 14? Wait, 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 wait. Did she say, did, some, did this person say this happened in 2002 or am I making that up? I'm not sure here. <laughs> Let's see now. Yeah, it says I've known her since 2002. Oh, okay. Okay, so then it would have had to have been since after 2002 then clearly. Okay, so that would mean that this event, if it were real, would have happened after the two arrests that Plunder outlined so brilliantly in the research she did in that video that we watched earlier. Now, Plunder was thinking that another event would have and it's not to say that there aren't two additional events. We don't know. Maybe there are. But Plunder was saying that she felt strongly that there was an event before the research that she did uncovered the arrest of Nicole Kessinger. Because the first one um, refers to the fact that it was a, an, a second a second incident or a repeat mm -hmm. offender or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this would be even like another one. So I will definitely be looking into this. I'll let you know if I find anything. Yeah. Juvenile records are, are, are hard to obtain, but it, you know, w once you stab somebody and show no respect for police, like what's, 
What's right. another offense? Right, right. <laughs> Seriously. Because I mean, this, this is like really, this one's really crazy. But wow. But it also makes her, like, d- what I saw, um, and I'm going to put on my, you know, my PhD hat. What I saw is a father who had not sat in a questioning room for the first, second, or third time. Yeah. Oh, you. So you think that he's he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you oh, think he he's played that role in her defending her foolishness? Yeah. yeah like yeah. this is like, oh, here we go again. No, yeah. I, I saw a dad who that was not the like I said the first, second, or third time he had. Been yeah. No, I I got that feeling too. I got that feeling that Dwayne Kessinger that was like old hat for him. Yep. Yeah. He's like, here we go again. <laughs> Dang it, Nicole. <laughs> Wait, Nicole, stop, stop. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Don't do it again. Oh, my gosh. That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah he was my, used to my favorite. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite reality shows was uh, Kathy Griffin, Life on the D List, and her gr- her mother would go, "God damn it, Kathleen!" And all I could hear is, "God damn it, Nicole!" <laughs> <laughs> her dad, you did it again. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to close off with leaving you guys with that thought. I'm going to go reread this email and be prepared to be shocked. <laughs> and Chris, thank you so much for coming up. You are an absolutely delightful guest, and I would love for you to come up and anytime. You were great to talk to. And I'm so glad that you are doing well now and that you got yourself out of that situation. Really, truly, we thank God that you're okay and that you, yep. you know, that, you know, the angels were on your side and helped you get out of that situation. Thank yep, God and that. my job is to help other women get out of it. That's right. Awesome. Great work. Oh, well, thank you so much. You've been absolutely amazing. Thanks, Kelly. So, yeah. Awesome. And thank you for watching for so long. I'm so so glad to know that people like you are out there in the crowd. <laughs> thank you. So, all right, guys. Well, everybody, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, moderators. You are the absolute bomb. You are so amazing. Thank you for all that you do. I appreciate you. I saw you do a lot of work tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, subscribers, members. If you are just looming and you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing because we would definitely love for you to come back. I know I'd love for you to come back and you guys are just so wonderful. I love spending my Friday nights with you guys. You're amazing. And so I think we're going to close out with, you know, a couple of our favorite um, quotes, shall we say from Nicole Kessinger herself. And I will be doing some research into this. Aunt Diane, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming out here with me, Christopher. I am having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me. And I'm glad that you're having a blast. I am so out of breath. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really trying to help you guys. I just, I need you guys to help me too. Like, yes, ma'am. We'll do this as a team, but just don't. <laughs> so, fucking let the, me down, the reason I, why um, we can't, like, I do, I think, uh, I did think about this yesterday that I would like to sit down with you once we um, have your text messages and the phone calls and we can put them in a uh, some type of easily looking that we can sit down and look at them and compare them and we can kind of get the context of how everything was going that night i would like to do that with you unfortunately so the download that we got yesterday is going to take uh, multiple days to be analyzed i probably won't have it back till next week and then because you guys did have so many uh, text messages uh, there's one of my analysts is working on getting those in order so we can put something together where we can actually sit down and discuss it. But I do think that's something that we would, I want to do in the near future sometime, probably next week. I mean, I can do that. I don't mind giving you guys my time. I just need you guys to like help me with my employer and try to just help me brace for this media thing. I, I'm with you. We, we definitely need to accelerate the case because the more law, the more it takes, the less sure that they are of situation. He murdered her. She's out of the picture. You're never going to know if she was pregnant. If he can get away with murder, you're not going to. I got divorced from my wife. You Wait. said, do you understand what I'm saying here? If if she's gone, but this don't lead hypothetically, please. Yeah. Don't hypothetically. Lead on. If she, okay. you understand where I'm going. If right, you didn't you're, know. You're leading into right. questions that are nothing with your. If you didn't know, though. Wait, Nick. 
that she was there. Did you hear what I said? I'm not, I'm following. Stop asking about it. She didn't have anything to do with it. She wasn't there that morning. She voluntarily cooperated with law enforcement. She provided us all the information. I'm not going to tell you where she's at. Stop. Leave me alone.